Nationals. A's on Sirius 138, XM 182, and Internet 859. Nationals on Internet 869. 4.10 p.m., Boston Red Sox take on the LA Angels. Red Sox on Sirius 139, XM 183, and Internet 843. Angels on Internet 852. 4.10 p.m., Miami Marlins take on the Atlanta Braves. Marlins on Sirius 160, XM 184, and Internet 854. Braves on Internet 841. 4.10 p.m., Tampa Bay Rays take on the San Francisco Giants. Rays on Sirius 161, XM 178, and Internet 866. Giants on Internet 863. 6.10 p.m., Cleveland Gardens take on the New York Yankees. Guardians on Sirius 162, XM 185, and Internet 847. Yankees on Internet 858. 8.10 p.m., Arizona Diamondbacks take on the St. Louis Cardinals. Diamondbacks on Sirius 211, XM 186, and Internet 840. Cardinals on Internet 865. 9.10 p.m., LA Dodgers take on the San Diego Padres. Dodgers on Sirius 208, XM 175, and Internet 853. Padres on Internet 862. National Feed on Sirius XM and Internet Channels 89. Spanish Feed on Sirius 209, XM 176, and Internet 871. 9.40 p.m. Seattle Mariners take on the Chicago Cubs. Mariners on Sirius 210, XM 177, and Internet 864. Cubs on Internet 844. I'm Frank Trachtenberg with your Sirius XM MLB schedule for Saturday, April the 13th. All times are Eastern, and please remember, all games, times, and channels are subject to change. Check SiriusXM.com for the latest updates. In Major League Baseball, 1.10 p.m. Detroit Tigers take on the Minnesota Twins. Tigers on Sirius XM channels 89, Internet 849, Twins on Internet 856. 1.40 p.m. New York Mets take on the Kansas City Royals. Mets on Sirius 208, XM 175, and Internet 857. Royals on Internet 851. 2.10 p.m. Chicago White Sox take on the Cincinnati Reds. White Sox on Sirius 209, XM 176, and Internet 845. Reds on Internet 846. 3.07 p.m. Toronto Blue Jays take on the Colorado Rockies. Blue Jays on Sirius 210, XM 177, and Internet 868. Rockies on Internet 848. 4.05 p.m. Baltimore Orioles take on the Milwaukee Brewers. Orioles on Sirius 106, XM 179, and Internet 842. Brewers on Internet 855. 4.05 p.m. Philadelphia Phillies take on the Pittsburgh Pirates. Phillies on Sirius 137, XM 181, and Internet 860. Pirates on Internet 861. 4.05 p.m. Houston Astros take on the Texas Rangers. Astros on Sirius 119, XM 180, and Internet 850. Rangers on Internet 867. Spanish feed on Internet 870. 4.07 p.m. Oakland Days take on the Washington Nationals. A's on Sirius 138, XM 182, and Internet 859. Nationals on Internet 869. Get the latest news, opinion, and analysis from MMA to boxing and the professional wrestling world 24-7. Sirius XM Fight Nation. Sirius XM 156. And the SXM app. Tampa Bay Rays manager Kevin Cash was on MLB Network Radio and talked about the Rays pitching. It just feels like every start that he's made for us, he goes out and gives us a chance to win. Um, last year, he was, or excuse me, last last start, it was a little bit of a grind for him. Pitch count got driven up, but um, still got, found himself in the zone after the first inning and, and got us deep enough in the ball game where we could pull out a, you know, a series win on the road. Yeah, the, just the the continued work of these these guys that you've had come in who maybe aren't you know overpowering guys like Latell, Savali, Eflin. How much of this is credit to the way you guys game plan? How much is it credit to their pitchability, the, their feel for pitching that's allowed them to have the success? No, it's all credit to them and their pitchability. Uh, we do everything we can, and Kyle does everything he can to provide the, the right messages. And certainly we do our home homework on game planning, but it's it's on the pitcher to go out there and execute. And we're just fortunate that we got a group of guys that can really go out there and do that. When those guys are on, they're hitting spots that that make 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 allows them to set up other pitches. And you see them get kind of get in a groove. Um, they all get there a little bit differently. You know, Siv has been really good. He pitches kind of at the top of the zone. He's got that big twelve six curveball. And then F, you know, generally with his, his two-seam cutter combination, uh, but the credit goes of all to them. Mad Dog Sports Radio has the best sports talk in the business. Covering sports with a passion and knowledge you need. Mad Dog Sports Radio. Sirius XM 86. And the SXM app. I'm Frank Trachtenberg with your Sirius XM MLB schedule for Saturday, April the 13th. All times are Eastern, and please remember, all games, times, and channels are subject to change. Check SiriusXM.com for the latest updates. In Major League Baseball, 1.10 p.m. Detroit Tigers take on the Minnesota Twins. 
Tigers on Sirius Nixon Channels 89 Internet 849, Twins on Internet 856. 1.40 p.m., New York Mets taking the Kansas City Royals. Mets on Sirius 208 XM 175 and Internet 857, Royals on Internet 851. 2.10 p.m., Chicago White Sox taking the Cincinnati Reds. White Sox on Sirius 209 XM 176 and Internet 845, Reds on Internet 846. 3.07 p.m., Toronto Blue Jays take on the Colorado Rockies. Blue Jays on Sirius 210 XM 177 and Internet 868, Rockies on Internet 848. 4.05 p.m., Baltimore Orioles take on the Milwaukee Brewers. Orioles on Sirius 106 XM 179 and Internet 842, Brewers on Internet 855. 4.05 p.m., Philadelphia Phillies take on the Pittsburgh Pirates. Phillies on Sirius 137 XM 18. Major League Baseball play-by-play is now on Sirius XM and the Sirius XM app. Why do I love calling this game? Calling this game? Calling this game? Calling this game? Why do I love calling this game? It's because I get a chance to bring some joy into people's lives. Anything can happen on a baseball field. We've got a new game! It's perfectly unscripted theater. Everybody on their feet! Because you never know what you're going to see on a given day. It is Bethlehem in the bank as Bryce Harper! Something about baseball on the radio. Something about the way wood hits leather. A swing and a drive to deep left center. The way leather hits dirt. And he make a play. Oh, my. The way a deep fly ball sounds like it's about to change history. I fly ball to center field. It's hit pretty well toward the wall. Until the cleats hit the grass, hit the crushed brick, and then nothing but sky in a silent crowd. Until leather hits leather and 40,000 fans lose their collective minds. In a perfect symphony of chaos. He jumped up on top of the wall, balanced himself, and caught it! The way nothing triumphs a perfectly honest call. I don't believe what I just saw. And the way the right voice can make a moment live forever. Touch them all, Joe! You'll never hit a bigger home run in your life! Outsiders may think this is just two teams. The ball, a bat, and a microphone, but no. For over a hundred years, this has been the soundtrack of the American pastime. He struck it out looking. It's over. It's over. The Rangers have won the World Series. The soundtrack of summer. This is Major League Baseball on the radio. Right now on Sirius XM. All rise. Coming in five. Get ready to play. Four. Get up. Three. Can you believe it? Put your seatbelt on. Wow. My goodness. Major League Baseball play-by-play is now on Sirius XM and the Sirius XM app. The NASCAR Cup Series is on Sirius XM. Let's go! We're back on the track Sunday. 2.30 p.m. Eastern. It's the Auto Trader Echo Park Automotive 400. From Texas Motor Speedway. On Sirius XM NASCAR Radio Channel 90. In the car. And on the all-new Sirius Sirius XM app. Get closer to everything that moves you wherever you are with the Sirius XM app. Let's make some smoke and drink some beer. Yeah! The most important person in sports is you, the fan. Let me tell you something. I'm a real fan. And your place for sports talk is Mad Dog Sports Radio, where your voice is heard all day long. I couldn't wait to get into the truck and turn on 82. Share the thrill of victory. The joy, the jubilation. I can't stop smiling. And the agony of defeat. When is this franchise going to realize people really care about this? Passionate sports fans call 888-MAD-DOG-6. You gotta love sports. Mad Dog Sports Radio, Channel 82, or anytime on the Sirius XM app. Get ready for the 2024 NFL Draft on Sirius XM NFL Radio. Touchdown, Caleb Williams. Catch exclusive interviews with the top prospects as they begin their journey to the NFL. And hear pick-by-pick coverage of the 2024 Draft from Detroit. With the first pick, the Chicago Bears select. Your home for the 2024 NFL Draft is Sirius XM NFL Radio Channel 88 in the car. And on the all-new Sirius XM app. You love listening to baseball. You love talking about baseball. You love yelling at your buddies about baseball because they love baseball, and so do we. That's why Sirius XM has the only channel on the radio dedicated to baseball 24-7. It's MLB Network Radio, Sirius XM Channel 89. News, opinions, passionate baseball talk from former players and GMs, plus interviews with players, managers, and executives, and much, much, much more. If you can hear me right now, you've got MLB Network Radio, Sirius XM Channel 89, and on the Sirius XM app. The Masters is on Sirius XM. Has pace, working up to the hole, needs to turn. It turned all right. It turned right into the cup for John Rahm. That's a birdie. Hi, this is Mike Tirico. 
Hear every incredible shot in all the dramatic moments as the best golfers in the world vie for the coveted green jacket. Everyone at Amen Corner stands and appreciates the great Tiger Woods. Hear the Masters exclusively on Sirius XM, on Masters Radio Channel 92 in the car, and on the all-new Sirius XM app. You love listening to baseball. You love talking about baseball, and so do we. That's why Sirius XM has the only channel on the radio dedicated to baseball 24-7. It's MLB Network Radio, Sirius XM Channel 89. News, opinions, passionate baseball talk from former players and GMs, plus interviews with players, managers, and executives, original specials, and much, much, much more. All baseball, every day, on your radio. If you can hear me right now, you've got MLB Network Radio, Sirius XM Channel 89, and on the Sirius XM app. Burritos and good times. Visit LoneStar.ca. CJCL Toronto. This. Slams the ball to right field. Way back. Way, 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 way gone. Is Toronto Blue Jays baseball. Low rounding and heading for second. The throw. In time. On the Sportsnet Radio Network. The debut of Yariel Rodriguez. The Blue Jays try to tie up the series today with the Cuban right-hander pitching in his first major league game. Rodriguez looking to neutralize a Rockies offense that scored 12 runs on 20 hits last night. Hi, everyone. Hope you're staying warm on this chilly Saturday in downtown Toronto. I'm Ben Schulman alongside Chris LaRue. Show Ali is our host today. Nick Blackmore is our producer. Tom Young and Andrew Adams are our technical directors. Toronto Blue Jays baseball is brought to you by the local family-owned Crown Rust Control Centers in Kitchener and Waterloo. Protect your vehicle from rust today. Find your local family-owned Crown at crown.com, Canada's number one rust protection. As I mentioned before, Yariel Rodriguez making his debut today. The largest total money signing for the Blue Jays this offseason. On the other side, Rockies free agent pickup Dakota Hudson looks to continue his strong start to a proven year with Colorado. Toronto and Colorado battle after this. You're listening to Blue Jays baseball streaming on the Sportsnet app, sportsnet.ca, and across the Sportsnet radio network. Timber Mart is Canada's building center, a solid neighbor to call upon when you've got a job to do. Your dependable home improvement store that offers the added value of Air Miles Reward Miles with every purchase of $15 or more. Visit TimberMart.ca. At Crown Rust Control Center, protection runs deep because every Crown Rust Control Center is owned by a local family who cares beyond business. Your Crown Rust Control Center is 100% committed to their product, to you, to their community, which is your community. Protecting you and what matters to you is equally important as protecting your vehicle. Did you know spring's the best time of year to protect your vehicle from rust? For a special spring offer, find your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center at crown.com. Timber Mart always has plans to help you with your plans. Your home, your cottage, your garage, whatever needs your attention first, check the most visited spot on our website for ready-to-order plans to get the job done with Canada's Building Center. Visit timbermart.ca. This Monday, hear live coverage of the 2024 WNBA Draft on Sirius. XM NBA Radio. Caitlin Clark is the all-time scoring leader in women's basketball history. Catch the top picks and interviews from stars like Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese, and many more after they're selected. You heard your name called. Who went through your mind? To hear my name called, it was like fresh air. Tune in Monday night at 7 Eastern on Sirius XM NBA Radio, Channel 86, in the car, and on the all-new Sirius XM app. Hey, baseball fans, the best 24-7 hoops talk lives on NBA Radio as we get you ready for the stretch run of the season only on Channel 86 and on the brand new Sirius XM app. That radio network. The debut in the Blue Jays system. Pretty good opening act. Rodriguez went four hitless, a walk, and struck out six. Stretched out today maybe to 70 pitches. They limit him to 55 on opening day. Turns that leg in. 
And Sogard strikes out with a high fastball, 96. Oh, he's got that kind of stuff. 96, up high. Pretty good spin, good extension as well. I mean, this is this is somebody like, and I know this is start number two in the United States. This is somebody that checks every every metric box that there is. That was the voice of Cooper Boardman on the Worcester Red Sox broadcast. The last start that Yariel Rodriguez made for the Buffalo Bisons. He makes his first start for the Toronto Blue Jays and at the major league level today. I'm Ben Schulman alongside Chris LaRue. Game two of Toronto and Colorado coming up in just a couple of minutes here from Rogers Center. And Chris, the Blue Jays needed jolts. They were utterly dominated yesterday, 12-4 to in the opener by Colorado. Yeah, this, this offense of the Colorado Rockies I think is a lot better than people give them credit for. They're only 4-10. and 10. But that's because their pitching isn't as good as their offense. We saw last night that they, they take good swings on mistakes. They, Kevin Gossman made a few mistakes, and the Rockies made him pay for those mistakes. I'm really excited to see Yariel Rodriguez today. Fans getting loud as Rodriguez and the Blue Jays are led out of the dugout by Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Before we get to the game today, let's take a look at the Bet365 standings update. At Bet365, you can bet live, in-game, on game props, totals, and the money line. Download the app and find out why it's never ordinary at Bet365. 19-plus play responsibly, Ontario only. Yankees are in the ninth inning right now against Cleveland, but before that game finishes up, they are 10-3, and three, top of the division. The Baltimore Orioles, 8-5, and five, two games back. Tampa Bay Rays on a bit of a search. They've jumped into third at 8-6. and six. Boston slipping back a little bit. I believe they've lost four in a row. They're 7-7, seven and seven, and the Blue Jays at 6-8, and eight, just behind them. Yariel Rodriguez. On the rubber now, getting his warm-up pitches in. The Cuban right-hander, who the Blue Jays brought in on a five-year, $32 million deal this offseason, did not pitch at all last year. He's pretty funky, Chris. It's going to be interesting to see what he looks like for the first time on a major league mound. Well, he's got really good stuff. He's got that mid to upper 90s fastball with just a slight bit of cut to it, which it, you don't really see that often. You see sink, you see rise, but you rarely see that 97, 98 mile an hour fastball with a little bit of cut. He's got command of everything. Look, he had a 1.15 ERA in Japan. I pitched in Japan. I know how difficult it is to succeed. I had a 9 ERA. So the fact that he had a 1.15, I am in awe of that, and I can guarantee that's why the Blue Jays signed him to what to that $32 million deal. Your ERA is still better than mine in Japan, <laughs> so don't worry about that. Rodriguez getting loose. He pitched twice for Buffalo. Six and a third innings, only allowed one hit, struck out ten, walked three, and now he will face major league hitters for the first time in a real game. Did pitch twice in spring training as well. Charlie Blackman, Ezekiel Tovar, Ryan McMahon, the batters here for the Rockies as Blackman bats. I'll go through the full Rockies and Blue Jays lineup. First, Rodriguez turning around, so I can tell you Blackman leads off in DHs. Tovar, the shortstop, will hit second. McMahon, the third baseman, bats third. Blackman, the left-handed hitter, in the box. Didn't get the start yesterday. Rodriguez into the wind, kicks, hesitates, and fires home. It's low, ball one. Time of the first pitch today, 3.07, indoor at Rogers Center. Batting fourth today for the Rockies is the right fielder Chris Bryant. The catcher Elias Diaz hits fifth. Nolan Jones is the left fielder batting sixth. Brendan Rodgers, the second baseman, hits seventh. Here's the 1-0. Outside ball two. And then a Lowry Smart Montero, the first baseman, hits eighth. With Brenton Doyle, the center fielder, batting ninth. Dakota Hudson, right-handed pitcher, gets the start today for Colorado. Yariel Rodriguez is 2-0. Blackman takes it. It's a little bit outside. Ball three. Balls and strikes being handled by Nestor Seha today. Crew Chief Todd Tishner at first, Corey Blazer at second, Manny Gonzalez at third, 3-0. Right over the heart of the plate, strike one. And that's actually the first fastball that he threw that had that little bit of slight cut to it. Rodriguez trying to battle back against Blackman. His pitch. Hit in the air to left, not very deep. That'll hang up for Davis Schneider out there who makes the catch, one out. For Rodriguez, you're gonna see that fastball. He's got a slider, a curveball, a splitter. He can sink his fastball at times too, doesn't do it often.
One down for Ezekiel Tovar, new baseball for Rodriguez. I think they're going to store that one, his first major league out. And against a pretty good guy in Charlie Blackman to get it. Here's the right-on-right -right pitch to Tovar. High ball one, missed with the slider. Right away, you can see that Japanese influence in his, in his delivery. Really slow, really deliberate. 1-0. Swing and a miss. Got him to chase the slider away. Didn't pitch pro last year, but spent the last couple years with the Chinichi Dragons in NPB. 1-1. One, one. Hit foul down the right field line into the seats out of play, 1-2. and two. And the thing that I love about the fact that he did pitch in Japan is that means he knows how to pitch backwards. They taught him how to pitch backwards, how to throw a slider in a 2-0 count, how to throw a changeup or a splitty in a 2-0 count. The 1-2, hesitation and pitch, swing and a miss. Just fed Tovar sliders there until he set him down, two outs. We're in the first inning, brought to you by Armstrong Bird Food. Bring nature to your backyard with Armstrong, feeding Blue Jays since 1986. Visit Armstrong Bird Food. Dot com. There's the first strikeout in the Major League career of Yariel Rodriguez. Two down. Here's Ryan McMahon. McMahon, a left-handed hitter. The first pitch. Fastball. Just high and outside. Ball one. Ben, how do you feel about that pause at the top with the leg lift? I mean, I like it. I, I know that there's some critics in the North American game of having different mechanics. 1-0. Called strike, one and one. There was no pause with that pitch right there. There was a pause before, so obviously he switches it up. This is the first time I'm seeing him live. Yeah. I really like what I see so far. It's actually a fun, he's a fun pitcher to watch. For sure. The one, one. Fastball, called strike two. I know sometimes in the North American game they say, well, you want the same mechanics each pitch. That's how you keep your command. But there are guys, even American-born guys in the majors who do it. I think of Tyler Anderson, the starter, who was with the Rockies at one point. He kind of kicks his leg out sometimes and hesitates sometimes. With two outs, here's Rodriguez, is one, two. Missed low there with the splitter. Ran the splitter up to 92. He'll kind of mix that up. Can be high 80s, can be low 90s at times. It's a pitcher uses a lot against left-handed hitters like McMahon. Base is empty, the 2-2. Two, two. Foul tipped off the glove of Brian Servant, who's holding his glove there, but he can't fool the home plate umpire Nestor Seha because the ball's right out in front of him. So still two and two. Yeah, with that split finger, if he takes just a little bit of speed off it, you'll see a little bit more action to it. That 92 mile an hour split has less drop to it. It's more like a fastball. Two, two once more. Swing and a miss. Drop the slider below the bat and a skip off the mound for Rodriguez. Two Ks in a 1-2-3 top of the first to start his major league career. Springer Guerrero Bichette when we return 0-0 headed to the bottom of the first. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. If you're looking for a fun day, did you know the day before Monday? Junior J Sunday. You can paint your face. Come and meet Ace and run base to base. Junior J Sunday. So many things to do. You can bring your crew and even mom and dad too. Junior J Sunday. Sundays are for Junior J's. And with all kinds of cool new games and activities in the exciting outfield district areas, there's no end to the family fun you'll have. If you're feeling the song, grab your dad or mom. Visit BlueJays.com. Junior J Sunday. Everyone dreams of owning their own personal slice of heaven. Now you can, thanks to Fixed Rate Pizza by Pizza Pizza. Until the end of 2024, lock into an extra-large four-topping pizza at a fixed price of $17.99. No matter how bad food prices get this year, your pizza price stays. So why not say no to surge pricing and yes to Fixed Rate Pizza? Order now from Pizza Pizza. Go to pizzapizza.ca. At Bet365, we don't do ordinary. 
That's why we introduced in-game betting. Because when the game starts, the action doesn't stop. With in-game betting, you can wager on game props, player props, totals, and the money line. And remember, in-game, you can track your same-day parlay with the option to cash out. Check out in-game betting and find out why. It's never ordinary at Bet365. Must be 19 years or older. Ontario only. Please play responsibly. If you or someone you know has concerns about gambling, visit connexontario.ca. This is Toronto Blue Jays baseball. The 0-2 pitch. Fastball. Strike three looking. On Sportsnet 590 The Fan and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Welcome to the Timbermark Broadcast booth. I've been Shulman alongside Chris LaRue. Bottom of the first inning, scoreless game, Rockies and Blue Jays. Here's George Springer against Dakota Hudson. Hudson's pitch is high, ball one. George Springer leads off for the Blue Jays today in right field with Vladimir Guerrero Jr. batting second and playing first. It's Bo Bichette, the shortstop, hitting third. 1-0 to Springer. In there, strike one. DH and cleanup hitter is Daniel Vogelback. Turner gets a rest today. Kevin Biggio, the second baseman, hits fifth. David Schneider, the left fielder, hits sixth. Dalton Varsho in center field, batting seventh, with Isaiah kiner falefa at the hot corner, batting eighth, and Brian Servin, the catcher, rounding out the lineup. 1-1 to Springer, down and away, 2-1. And, and it's Hudson now opposing Yariel Rodriguez. Hudson off to a strong start to this season, despite the 0-2 record, a 2-3-8 ERA in his two starts. The 2-1. Fouled off to the left side. Two balls, two strikes. Yeah, he's been the Rockies' best starter so so far this season, and you won't see a lot of hard stuff. He's more of like a Marcus Stroman type where there's a lot of sink, 89 to 92, somewhere in that range, but he really relies on that sink. Sinker, slider, four-seamer is three most used pitches. 2-2. Two, two. Springer fouls off a fastball. That was the four-seamer. And the count's still two balls, two strikes. Hudson in his first year with Colorado. Signed a one-year, $1.5 million deal with the Rockies this offseason with $1.5 million more in incentives. And he will, because he didn't get through his arbitration, was non-tendered by the Cardinals after last year. He will be set for arbitration with them next year. 2-2. Springer bounces a ball over the mound and up the middle. On the backhand side, the second baseman, Rogers fumbles it. And Springer is safe at first. That was a slowly hit ball. Rodgers had to go to the other side of the second base bag. It's why lean that they give George Springer a hit there on a ball that wasn't hit super hard. Yeah, that's definitely going to be a hit base hit. You can see just how excited George Springer is at first base. He doesn't care how hard he hit that ball. He needed that base hit for his confidence. Yeah, he's checking the scoreboard to see if that was a if that was a base hit. <laughs> they haven't flashed it up yet, and yeah, now they do. Yeah, that's a hit. Here's Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Runner on, nobody out, no score, bottom one. The pitch from Hudson. Down and away, ball one. Blue Jays scored in the first inning yesterday for the first time since the finale of the season opening series. Game four at the Trop against the Rays. one to Guerrero. Low 2-0. And the Rockies, for what it's worth, in 14 games this year, have allowed the opposing team to score 10 times in the first inning. Springer with a solid lead off first. The 2-0 is taken down and away. Three balls, no strikes. Guerrero yesterday hitless in five trips to the plate. He did walk in the fifth. And that was a really good take from Guerrero. He's gotten big lately with 2-0 counts, 3-0 counts. That was a slider down and away. Good good take from, from Vlad. 3-0 pitch. Swing and a high drive to right field. Bryant going back at the track. Twists and makes the catch. Crashing into the fence in front of the bullpen. Bryant still down on his hands and knees. He did not get a great beat on that ball initially. And he's up now but looking a little bit ginger as he walks off the track. Guerrero retired, one out. Yeah, Guerrero put a really good swing on that fastball that was out over the plate. He hit it to the big part of the field. Chris Bryant gets turned around. He caught that in his palm. He's actually lucky that he caught that ball crashing into the fence in right field. Caught it and then slammed into the fence in front of the Rockies relievers. Bryant was the DH yesterday in right field today with Blackman in the lineup. One out, runner on first. Here's Bo Bichette. It's Springer taking a three-and-a-half step lead, held on by Ella Reese Montero, the pitch. 
Paul Ty. Boy, did that look like it got a lot of the zone. 1-0. Oh. Bo, of course, the son of former Blake Street bomber Dante Bichette, who was a big part of the Rockies teams in the 90s. The 1-0. Oh. Bo went around about 60% of the way for strike one. That was a breaking ball low to the zone. While a lot of it was before Bo was born, Dante, a four-time All-Star with the Rockies. The 1-1, one, one, down and away, 2-1, and one, including 1995 when he hit 40 homers, drove in 128 runs, and finished second in MVP voting to Barry Larkin that year. Dante led Major League Baseball in hits and RBIs, leading the National League in homers as well, one of the great Rockies. 2-0 to Bo Bichette. Is grounded to the left side, past the reach of the shortstop, Tovar into left field. Springer up to second, Bichette stops at first. There are two on with one out. Yeah, that's got to feel good for Bo. He didn't really get all of that baseball, just enough to bounce it through the left side. But he's on base with a base hit. That's got to feel good for him. For Bichette, his 10th hit of the year. And here comes Daniel Vogelback. Hasn't had a ton of opportunities to start so far for the Blue Jays this year. Only nine at-bats on the season for Vogelback. Two for his first nine. He has walked a couple of times. He's got a double and an RBI so far. The four walks on the season, though, for Vogelback have made his OPS, or pardon me, his on-base percentage close to 500, though. Two on, one out. Pitch to the left-handed hitter. High and outside, ball one. I like this matchup. We've seen Vogelbach be really patient at the plate. He's taken some really good walks. Pinch hit walk yesterday and on Wednesday. The 1-0. Low ball two. He will just not give in to pitches out of the zone. Yeah, you'll see. Even if it's not in his wheelhouse, he doesn't even offer at it. Two big chains dangling out of the jersey of Vogelback. Set up straight up in an open stance. Turning the throw to second. Springer dives back. You can see the shortstop Tovar creeping in well before. I think Hudson actually was a little bit late with the turn and throw, and Springer got back in easily. He leads off second again. Guerrero off first. Dakota Hudson sets. Glove near his chest. The 2-0. High and outside. Three balls, no strikes. Part of the reason Vogelback is in today, too, you want to get Justin Turner a rest, and lefties have hit Hudson much harder than righties have in his career. So you get Vogelback batting now with Kevin Biggio on deck. 3-0. Called strike at the top of the zone. Vogie taken all the way. Yeah, Vogie still didn't like that call. You can see him shaking his head. That was at the very top of that strike box there. Borderline call, but a strike. No score, bottom of the first. Blue Jays threatening. The 3-1. Outside, ball four. Springer up to third. Bichette up to second. Vogel back with the walk. Goes to first. And the bases are loaded with one down for Kevin Biggio. Such a good at-bat from Vogie. He never gave in. A lot of hitters, 3-1, 2-0. They'll get big and they'll, they'll try to do too much. But Vogie will happily take his walk and move that lineup along. So here's Biggio, who extended his hitting streak to seven games yesterday with an RBI single in the first, tied for his career-long hit streak. The pitch. Check swing. Pitch was down and in. Appeal down to third. He did not go around, says Manny Gonzalez on the appeal. 1-0. One, oh. One out and the base is full. Third baseman McMahon plays on the baseline right in between second and third. Rest of the infield is backed up, looking to turn two and end the inning. The 1-0. Oh. Called strike. After being put down hard yesterday, 12 to 4, the Blue Jays would love a big start here against the Rockies in game two. 1 1 to Biggio. Outside, ball two. 
really good take there. That was a good changeup. Started right down the middle and kind of faded away off the plate. Cavan noticed that right out of the hands and took it. Hudson's thrown 13 balls, nine strikes so far. His pitch is hit in the air to left center field. Running over Doyle, the center fielder. Stops and it's caught in left by Jones. Springer feints a tag but will go back. Jones throws through to the plate and is on his stomach right now. Or rather, it was Doyle down on the turf. Those two had a bit of a minor collision, but it appears that they're okay. Jones has a big arm, and that one was not hit deep enough to advance Springer. So that will just be a fly out, no sacrifice fly. And the baton pass to Davis Schneider with two outs and the bases loaded. Yeah, I actually thought Springer would try to score on that play. I didn't know Nolan Jones had such a big arm. That, that was a great throw right to the chest. Yeah, Jones has one of the bigger arms in the National League in left field. Pitch to Davis Schneider. Outside ball one. I was talking to Jack Corgan, radio guy for the Rockies yesterday, and he did mention kind of like Yankee Stadium in a way, Coors Field's got a bigger left field than right field. So you actually find that you might have your more rangy or harder throwing guy in left in Coors Field rather than right where most teams would play them. 1-0 is taken by Schneider for strike one. And you can see just how much sink Hudson has on that fastball. It started about two or three inches off the plate and ran right back over the middle. A lot like Marcus Stroman. Schneider trying to drive in some runs here. Bases loaded, two down, the 1-1. Called strike on the outside edge, one and two. Blue Jays have made Dakota Hudson work. This is his sixth batter. Here comes the 27th pitch of the day from the right-handed starter. High and tight. Ball two. Schneider ducks back. And now I wouldn't be surprised if they try to go away here with a slider or a changeup. Schneider has to fight here. Try to foul off anything close. Schneider leaning slightly over the plate. The 2-2. Checks his swing on a pitch down and away. Appeal to first. No swing, says crew chief Todd Tishner. Full count. Hudson has to challenge Schneider here or he'll walk in a run. The runner's getting a head start. 3-2, two, two outs, bases loaded, bottom of the first in a scoreless game. Hudson in the set, brings his glove up. Waits a moment, kicks and fires. Down low, ball four, RBI walk, David Schneider, 1-0 Blue Jays. Such a good IB from Schneider. Such an important run for this Blue Jays offense. They, they really struggled yesterday. And to score that first run there, it's really, really important, especially especially with Yariel Rodriguez on the mound. And you had mentioned yesterday the struggles of the Rockies' bullpen. They want to get into that bullpen as soon as possible. They've at least started this process by forcing Hudson to throw 29 pitches already. And now pitching coach Daryl Scott is going to go out to the mound here in the first inning to talk to his starter. Yeah, Hudson has only thrown 12 strikes out of 29 pitches. So you're not going up there aggressive is what you're telling me. <laughs> and so Dalton Varsho has to be patient here. Yeah, He has to wait for his pitch. Don't try to do too much. When I talk about guys getting big, he's a guy that loves to get big. And that he just ends up, ends up pulling off pitches and grounding to shortstop or popping something up. He has to wait for Hudson to come to him here. Varsho had one of his better offensive days of the season yesterday. Hit a solo home run in the second and came up with a single in that game as well, going two for four. He's up right now with the bases loaded. Two outs, one nothing Blue Jays, bottom of the first. The right on left pitch. Outside, ball one. That's where they're going to target likely for Varsho. Hitless on pitches on the outside portion of the plate so far this year. The 1-0. Swing and a high fly ball. Way back in right. It's gone. Grand slam. Dalton Varsho. 5-0 Blue Jays in the first.
The second Grand Slam in the career of Dalton Varsho. A rocket to right field, and Toronto's blown it open in the first. It's 5-0. And Hudson threw that changeup right down the middle, the exact pitch that Dalton Varsho was waiting for, and he did not miss it, drilling it into that bullpen in right field. Homer's on back-to-back -back days for Varsho. That's got to feel so good for a guy who had a good spring and then has really struggled to start this season. Doesn't look like it anymore. First pitch to Isaiah Kiner-Falefa. High ball one, and now a 5 nothing game in favor of the Blue Jays. Bottom of the first, two outs and the base is empty. Well, he's been swinging at pitches that he can't hit. He's been swinging at pitches up around his hands, down and away. 1-0 is high ball two. The Rockies already have movement in the pen, by the way. We heard all spring training that, that Dalton's approach was different and he was going to be swinging at pitches that he can handle. But early on in this season, we haven't seen it. We've seen it the last couple of days. 2-0 to IKF. Swinging a drive to center. That'll get Doyle back to the track, but he stops right at the front of it and makes the catch to end the inning. The Blue Jays, though, come up with five runs on three hits. It's Dalton Varsho's grand slam that has Toronto up 5-0 at the end of one. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball, brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center, streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Merging influences from Afropop to chamber music. Vampire Weekend helped reshape the sound of indie rock and alternative. As their fifth album, Only God Was Above Us, arrives, hear the story behind it. I just started playing this riff. This had the feel of a good, simple pop song. Alongside nearly two decades of indie classics. Vampire Weekend Radio, all month in the Sirius XM app. Fantasy Sports Radio is helping you win your fantasy leagues right now on Channel 87. It's a home run for Ronald Acuna. From in-season fantasy baseball management to daily fantasy basketball to getting you ready for the NFL draft, Fantasy Sports Radio is here to help you dominate. How you manage your team day in and day out will be the difference in where you finish in 2024. Fantasy Sports Radio, your home for fantasy sports. Channel 87 and on the all-new Sirius XM app. The South Carolina Gamecocks are on top of the women's college basketball world yet again. Perfection for South Carolina. 38 games, 38 wins. We're reacting to the perfect season and talking to the biggest names right here on Channel 374. Congratulations, Coach Saley. What does this particular title mean to you? This title is pretty special because it was unexpected. Keep it locked into Sirius XM SEC Radio as we continue to break it all down and celebrate the Gamecocks' third national title. Fantasy Sports Radio is helping you win whichever fantasy sport you play. Right now on Channel 87 and on the all-new Sirius XM app. Radio Network. The second inning is presented by Bet365. Download the Bet365 app for today's baseball odds and find out why it's never ordinary at Bet365. 19 plus, play responsibly, Ontario only. Yariel Rodriguez starts his second major league inning with a strike. It's 0-1 against right-handed hitting right fielder Chris Bryant. 5-0 Blue Jays, top of the second. Dalton Varsho with a grand slam in the home half of the first, if you weren't with us, has blown open this game early. Rodriguez, the righty, in his major league debut, fires to Bryant. Swing and a looping ball down the left field line. Fair ball. It's bouncing into the corner. Bryant around first. He's headed over to second and will have a stand-up double. The 2016 National League MVP is looking a lot more like himself these past two days than his early struggles to start the year. Well, coming into this series, he was hitting 100, and he's at, he has three hits over the last couple of games. He looks a lot better. That was actually not a terrible pitch from Yariel Rodriguez, a slider that was down, and Chris Bryant just goes down and kind of golfs it into left field. So Bryant on second. Here's Elias Diaz coming off. An all-star season with the Rockies. Catcher bats right, bouncing on his front left foot. The pitch from Rodriguez. Slider in there, strike one. First time we get to see Rodriguez in the stretch. John Schneider did talk about two things that Rodriguez does really well, aside from just the pitches he throws. Holding runners and fielding his position. Staring out at Bryant now, the pitch home. 
is grounded to short. Bichette will pick it up. Bryant retreats to the second base back. Both throws to first. One out. Well, in Japan, they work really, really hard on pitchers' defense. Pitchers' fielding, you practice that all day long. Probably, I would say, at least double the amount of times in Japan as opposed to U.S. baseball. North American baseball, I'd say. Yariel Rodriguez on the rubber. Next batter up is Nolan Jones. Pitch to the left-handed hitter. Strike one. We kind of saw that early on. I was at the first simulated game that Rodriguez threw, and there was a soft liner back to him. I want to say off the bat of Kevin Biggio at the end of it, Rodriguez at the end of a simulated game dove off the mound to make a catch. <laughs> the 0-1, down and in, 1-1, one and one. and those outs, outs count nowhere. There's no <laughs> stats or benefit to those, but he was fiery and really engaged defensively too. Well, he's trying to make a team. Yeah. He didn't want to go to Buffalo. Did for two starts. Now here with the Blue Jays in his debut. Runner on second, one out. The 1-1. One, one. Down low, 2-1. And, and he just threw a fastball at 97 miles an hour with just a slight bit of cut to it. I really, really like his stuff. Mid-90s fastball that will jump up to about 97 being his max. 2-1. Swing and a miss. Goes to the slider a ton. He used it there against Jones to get it to two and two. Brian Servin working behind the plate today with Rodriguez. Guerrero manning first, Biggio at second. The shortstops, Bo Bichette, IKF at third. And then Schneider, Varsho, Springer left to right in the outfield. Servin did catch one of the two spring starts for Yariel Rodriguez. The other caught by Peyton Henry. The 2-2 two -two pitch. Just low with 97. That's a good pitch, but a good take by Jones. Full count. Yeah, that was a really, really good pitch. Even better take from Nolan Jones. Kind of looked like he was fooled. <laughs> Jones watched that one whiz by, but it's a good take. Full count. Jones, a guy who did a lot of damage against the Blue Jays yesterday. 3-2. Hit in the air down the left field line. Potentially playable. IKF sprinting toward the netting. Will have to support himself up against it. That one falls into the third row of seats. Still 3-2. and two. Jones coming off a two for five day. He doubled and homered in the game yesterday. He was one of the guys struggling to start the year for the Rockies that you figured it would turn a little bit. He was hitting 157 going into yesterday's game, up to 179 entering today. Hit 297 last year. 3 2 pitch. Breaking ball just high. Ball four. Jones walks, two aboard here with one out. Yeah, that was kind of one of those those cement mixers from Yariel Rodriguez, just up and away. Didn't really get good extension on that slider, but still has the chance to get a double play here. Brian Servin out in front of the plate, giving some signs to the Blue Jays. Notable, he gets the start today against his former team in the Rockies. Servin will lead off the bottom of the second for the Blue Jays. Right now, one out in the top half, two on. And Brendan Rodgers up the pitch. A little bit high. Ball one. Pretty straight up defense in the infield. Kevin Biggio responsible for keeping Bryant close, but he's playing way off the second base bag. 1-0 is in there. Strike one. Rodriguez looks down at the rubber, now stares out beyond third. A peek at Bryant at second. One more in the 1-1. In there at the knees at 95 for strike two. Only action that Yariel Rodriguez had last year was seven and a third innings and two starts for Cuba in the World Baseball Classic. 1-2 pitch. Fouled off. Ugly swing there by Rodgers, really defensive as he just beat the slider into the ground. Yeah, really defensive. That was just a, he was fooled by that slider really late with that swing and kind of just tries to fight it off, do anything to stay alive. And he just make, gets a piece of it there. Kind of looked like a golf swing almost, <laughs> slow follow through. One, two again. Outside with the fastball. Servin put his heel down, kind of went half splits to reach out for that one.
Bryant leading off second after the leadoff double. Jones off first. He walked. One out. The 2-2. Two -two. Slow breaking ball a little bit high. Flip the curveball over. And it's now a full count. Don't want to lose Rodgers here. Rodriguez was ahead. One ball and two strikes. Now it's three and two. Righty's pitch. Swing and a miss. Slider right over the heart of the plate. Rodgers way out in front. Two down. Well, Rodgers was fooled a couple of times during that at bat. Both of, both of the, the pitches were sliders. He's obviously not seeing his slider out of the hand. Really good 3-2 pitch there right down the middle with good movement down and away. So with that, here comes El Aris Montero. Right-handed hitting first baseman. Back foot on the back line of the batter's box. The pitch. Foul tipped into the glove. Strike one. Montero, another guy who struggled out of the gates, hitting 206 through 10 games this year. Did have two hits, though, and his first extra base hit of the season yesterday. The 0-1. Inside outs the ball to shallow right. Guerrero, the first baseman, backing up onto the outfield turf. Turns, faces, makes the catch, and ends the inning. Rodriguez gives up a hit, walks one, but strands both. No runs in the top of the second, and it's 5-0 Blue Jays headed to the home half. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball, brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center, streaming at Sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. At Crown Rust Control, protection runs deep. Because every Crown Rust Control Center is owned by a local family who cares beyond business. Your Crown Rust Control is 100% committed to their product, to you, to their community, which is your community. Protecting you and what matters to you is equally important as protecting your vehicle. Did you know spring's the best time of year to protect your vehicle from rust? For a special spring offer, find your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center at crown.com. We're two men and a truck. And we've got lots of men and lots of trucks. Whether you're planning a move to a new home or to a new office down the hall, big or small, we move them all. We even sell packing and moving supplies. But no matter what you need, we'll do it with a smile. With a 96% referral rating and the professionalism you can trust, the choice is simple. So when you're planning your next move, call two men and a truck. Two men and a truck, the movers who care. When you have an iconic look like Danny Jansen, picking new glasses can be tough. Too big, too small, too cool, too much, too 90s, too futuristic. I think I'm just going to stick with the originals. These are working just fine. He is really seeing the ball well. Your friends will do a double take when they see you in your Danny Jansen new blue replica jersey and glasses. And he's got some style. On Monday, April 29th, the first 15,000 fans will receive a Jano bundle. For tickets, visit BlueJays.com. This is Toronto Blue Jays baseball. He makes the catch, and the Blue Jays win the ball game. On Sportsnet 590, the fan, and the Sportsnet radio network. Bottom of the second inning at Rogers Center. Former Rocky Brian Serban leads off for the Blue Jays. 9-1-2 for Toronto. They're up 5-0. Dakota Hudson still on the rubber. I'm Ben Schulman alongside Chris LaRue. First pitch to Servin is a fastball for strike one. The catcher serving a fifth round pick of the Rockies in 2016 out of Arizona State. 0-1. Swing and a drive to left. Jones going back. He's on the track and he makes the catch. One out. Now batting number four, George Springer. That's our future announcer presented by Rogers in the booth this inning. It's nine-year-old Tristan from Stouffville. Maybe seeing if Springer will send his third out of the park this year for Tristan to get to hit the home run horn. First pitch swinging. Springer lines it to left field for a base hit. Vladdy about to come up. Let's let Tristan take it away again. Up next, number 27, Vladimir Hero Jr. Against Tristan from Stouffville, our future announcer, presented by Rogers. One out, runner on first, 5-0 Blue Jays, bottom of the second. 
Guerrero today 0 for 1. Screamed the ball to right, but it was caught twisting by Chris Bryant back in the first. First pitch strike, 0 and 1. After the 0 for 1, Vlad's OPS dropping below 700 on the season. Hudson from the stretch, turns, throws over to first. Springer back with a dive. There's a big hole on the right on the right side of that infield. Montero holding on Springer. Rogers pretty close to second base. They shift Vladdy slightly to the pole in the infield, slightly to the opposite way in the outfield. A one. Fouled off of his front leg. Nothing in two. Guerrero popping his black bat off his right shoulder. The 0-2. Swing and a miss. Chases the slider outside, one down. And that's the pitch that Vlad really can't swing at there. That pitch started off the plate. Blue Jays fans, there's been eight millionaires created through Jays Care 50-50 jackpots, and that's a chance to be number nine. Number nine, the amazing April jackpot is over one million dollars and projected to hit multiple millions by the end of the month. Get your tickets at bluejays.com slash 5050 from Ontario or Nova Scotia. Check swing roller to first on the first pitch to Bo Bichette. Goes right into the glove of Montero, the first baseman, who steps on the back. The Springer single stranded, and the Blue Jays go down scoreless in the bottom of the second. Still 5-0 Toronto as we head to the third. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball, brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center, streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Everyone dreams of owning their own personal slice of heaven. Now you can, thanks to Fixed Rate Pizza by Pizza Pizza. Until the end of 2024, lock into an extra-large four-topping pizza at a fixed price of $17.99. No matter how bad food prices get this year, your pizza price stays. So why not say no to surge pricing and yes to Fixed Rate Pizza? Order now from Pizza Pizza. Pizza At Crown Rust Control Center, protection runs deep because every Crown Rust Control Center is owned by a local family who cares beyond business. Your Crown Rust Control Center is 100% committed to their product, to you, to their community, which is your community. Protecting you and what matters to you is equally important as protecting your vehicle. Did you know spring's the best time of year to protect your vehicle from rust? For a special spring offer, find your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center at crown.com. At Bet365, we don't do ordinary. That's why we introduced in-game betting. Because when the game starts, the action doesn't stop. With in-game betting, you can wager on game props, player props, totals, and the money line. And remember, in-game, you can track your same-day parlay with the option to cash out. Check out in-game betting and find out why. It's never ordinary at Bet365. Must be 19 years or older. Ontario only. Please play responsibly. If you or someone you know has concerns about gambling, visit connexontario.ca. This is Toronto Blue Jays baseball. Flatty with a huge stretch for the double play. On Sportsnet 590 The Fan and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Brenton Doyle steps in for the Rockies. We'll get started here in the top of the third. 5-0 Blue Jays. Yariel Rodriguez's pitch is hit foul over the screen, back of the hitter, and into the seat. So in one. This third inning is brought to you by the local family-owned Crown Rust Control Centers in Kitchener and Waterloo. Protect your vehicle from rust today. Find your local family-owned Crown at crown.com, Canada's number one rust protection. Next pitch is a fastball high. One ball, one strike. I'm Ben Schulman. To my left, Chris LaRue. Rodriguez entered this inning on 35 pitches. His 1-1. Inside, 2-1. and one. Pitch count supposed to be 70, maybe 75 today for Rodriguez. So if he keeps rolling this way, perhaps the Blue Jays get four innings out of the starter. First major league start for Rodriguez, who steps back, kicks up his leg, fires home, and the pitch is hammered to left. Going back, Schneider, he'll look up. That one's into the second deck. Huge home run for Brenton Doyle. His third of the season, Rockies on the board, 5-1. 
That was just a slider that Yariel left right over the middle. Had more horizontal movement than vertical. Doyle crushes that thing to left field. Holy cow. A 420-foot blast for the Rockies sophomore, who was a gold glover last year, didn't do a ton with the bat. Only had 10 homers last year in over 120 games. He's already got three on the season here in game 15. So 5-1 as the lineup flips over. The pitch to Charlie Blackman. Called strike one. That pitch at the top of the zone that Doyle hit out. 0-1 to the left-handed hitting Blackman. Outside. 98. I think that just shows Yariel that you always have to make good pitches. It's different in the big leagues. You can't just flip a, a, a cement mixer breaking ball in there. The 1-1. Blackman lifts the ball beyond third, sprinting into foul territory. IKF pulling up on the side warning track. It hits the netting and bounces back into the field of play. One and two. Well, I think he's angry after that homer. That last fastball he threw was 98. Fastest fastball of the day. He is a bit of an intimidating presence on the mound, squinting his eyes as he looks in menacingly to the pitcher Blackman. The one-two. In the dirt, two and two. Blackman's got a, you know, an interesting look himself. Could be a, a Pirates of the Caribbean stand-in. 2-2. Two -two. Just outside, full count. And he's had that thing for 13 years. Oh, yeah. Cool to have him here. First time Charlie Blackman's ever played at Rogers Center. A four-time All-Star, twice a Silver Slugger. His 14th year with the Rockies. 3-2 pitch outside, ball four. So a tough start here to this top of the third inning. A home run from Doyle to lead it off. Charlie Blackman with a walk. Here comes Ezekiel Tovar, Venezuelan shortstop. Right on right pitch. Tovar takes strike one. Good pitch. He just needs to concentrate on getting ahead, and then he can throw those off-speed pitches. Fastball is down in the zone. IKF, the third baseman, plays in. 0-1. Foul tipped by Tovar back into the gloves. Strike two. Rodriguez struck out Tovar, swinging on a slider back in the first. His first ever Major League strikeout. Blackman with a modest lead off first. 0-2 pitch. Hard hit ball to third. Picked by IKF. Throws to Biggio for one. Back to first. 5-4-3. Double play. Very nice play by the Gold Glover at third and IKF. And Biggio turned it well. Two down. That ball was actually hit very hard. A good play by IKF on a one-hop line drive. That pitch was actually middle-middle. It was one of those cement mixers yet again. And Tovar barely missed that pitch. Two down. Here's Ryan McMahon. One run in this inning for the Rockies. 5-1 Blue Jays. Top of three. First pitch to McMahon. Called strike one. McMahon alongside Blackman. One of the veterans now on this Rockies team. Debuted for Colorado in 2017. He takes the next pitch low. One and one. Really broke through with the Rockies, did McMahon in 2019, playing over 100 games. 1-1. One, one. Foul back, 1-2. and two. It's just a steady presence in their lineup. 20-plus homers in each of the last four full seasons. Nine homers in the shortened COVID season, which would have projected out to another 20-homer season. Plays third base for the second straight day. Two outs, nobody on. The 1-2 pitch. Fouled off. Lots of hesitations. Lots of just time changes mixing up here with the delivery for Yariel Rodriguez. Yeah, not quite like Nestor Cortez of no. the Yankees, but a long, long pause at the top of that leg lift. One, two. Called strike three. 
Slider at the top of the zone. McMahon set down, and after the solo home run, Rodriguez faces the minimum after that and just leaves it at one run for the Rockies in the top of the third. 5-1 Blue Jays, middle of the third inning. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball, brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center, streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. The 2024 NFL Draft is fast approaching, and Sirius XM NFL Radio is getting you ready with our series of draft previews. Marvin Harrison's third TD catch of the game. Get expert insight and analysis from our staff of former players, coaches, and executives. He may be the best receiver prospect I've seen for the last five years. Sirius XM NFL Radio's 2024 NFL Draft Preview, Offensive Players Edition. Get it anytime on the all-new Sirius XM app. Are you regretting eating that gas station hot dog? Yeah, we know. We've been there too. This is a message for baseball fans like you. Did you know that you get a channel that's talking baseball 24-7 as part of your Sirius XM subscription? What? Our lineup includes shows hosted by former big leaguers and executives. Plus, you'll hear from 17 managers each week. MLB Network Radio is on Sirius XM Channel 89. Or just search MLB Network Radio on the SXM app. Sirius XM Sports. We're more than just a game. There is no competition in soccer quite like the UEFA Champions League. And it's on Sirius XMFC. Kylian Mbappe delivering when it matters most. The stakes are higher now in the knockout stage where one goal can transform a club's trajectory. Jim Bellingham's driving, driving scores! And one performance can turn a star into an immortal. Erling Haaland has five! It's the Champions League knockout stage and all the top matches are on Sirius XMFC 157 and the all-new Sirius XM app. In season or out of season, the number one place for college sports is Sirius XM College Sports Radio, Channel 84. 5-1 Blue Jays, bottom of the third inning. Daniel Vogelback leads off for Toronto. First pitch from Dakota Hudson in there, strike one. Vogelback, Kevin Bishio, Davis Schneider will hit this inning. Left, left, right. Hudson, the right-hander, into the wind is 0-1. Soft breaking ball outside. Blue Jays with all five runs in the first inning. Dalton Varsho, who's due up fourth this inning, hit a grand slam. 1-1 to Vogie. Called strike two. Vogie with a 500 on base percentage after the walk in the first. Two hits and five walks in 14 plate appearances. 1-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Fooled there by, I believe, the slider. Yes, it was. And Vogelback is down for the first out. And that is something we haven't seen much of this year. Just a a defensive swing like that. Kind of unsure of what was coming. He's looked very confident in in that batter's box. Tough pitch from Hudson. Here's Kevin Biggio up with one out and the base is empty. Third baseman McMahon protecting Against the bunt, rest of the infield shifted to pull the pitch. Stroked foul to the left side, 0-1. Welcome to the Timbermart broadcast booth. Collect air miles on your next home improvement buys at Timbermart. And hey, make it a double play by scoring even more air miles when you purchase with your Timbermart credit card. For details, visit Timbermart, Canada's building center. I'm Ben Schulman. To my left, Chris LaRue. 0-1 to Biggio is bounced to second. Picked up by Rogers, shuffling to his left. Throws to first, two outs. 5-1 5-1 Blue Jays here. Two outs, bottom of the third. Brenton Doyle's home run for Colorado has put the Rockies on the board. Here's Davis Schneider. Schneider forced in the first run of the game with a bases loaded walk. His team leading eighth RBI of the season. The pitch. Outside ball one. Schneider batting 261 this year. Two homers, eight driven in. 1-0. Inside, he jumped back out of the way, adjusts his helmet now. Two balls, no strikes. Rodriguez, Servin, and Pete Walker were kind of huddled in the dugout chatting. I'm sure they were talking about pitch count, how he feels, all those good things. Next pitch to Schneider, strike one. Worth noting that Yariel Rodriguez... 
threw 55 pitches in his first minor league appearance and threw 47 in his second. He's at 53 right now. The 2-1. High and inside, 3-1. and one. I'd speculate he gets one more inning probably. You know, maybe they have someone up just in case things start going poorly. Yeah, I would guess 70, 75, somewhere around there is pretty safe. 3-1 to Schneider. Inside, ball four. Second walk of the day for Davis Schneider. Who was a bit of a jolt of energy for the Blue Jays yesterday. In a 12-4 loss, he came in defensively in the ninth, then batted, blooped a double into right field. But it was a double because he sprinted so hard. Took off on a partially blocked ball in the dirt and scored on Elias Diaz's throwing error as he tried to throw out Schneider going from second to third. That ball would go into left field, and Schneider came in to score. Here's Dalton Varsha, one for one with the grand slam, the pitch. Down and in ball one. Ask John Schneider about that Davis Schneider play yesterday because, you know, it's they're down 12, <laughs> 12 to 3 at that point, and he's playing like it's Game 7 of the World Series. Schneider said he loved it. He knows the fans love it. And the dugout loved it. That guy's only got one speed is what he said. 1-0 to Varsho. Schneider on first. Pitch outside, 2-0. I have to say the crowd probably reacted to that stolen base or ground or uh, dirt ball read. Almost as 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 if Dalton Varsho hit a grand slam. That's what it sounded like. It was a tough night for the Blue Jays, and that was one of their lone exciting plays. 2-0. Varsho takes low. Three balls, no strikes. Really good take from Dalton Varsho right there. I give him the green light here. Home runs on back-to-back days for Varsho. He's the main reason the Blue Jays are up 5-1 to one right now. His first inning grand slam. Schneider with the leadoff first. Held on by Montero. 3-0 pitch. Varsho takes the pitch called for strike one. John Schneider not in love with that call. That was a little bit below that strike box, but good pitch from Hudson. 3-1 to Varsho. Ground ball hits sharply to first. Nice pick on the forehand side by Montero, who walks to first base and ends the inning. The two-out walk stranded. Blue Jays up 5-1. to one. We'll go to the fourth. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball, brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center, streaming at Sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. This is PGA Tour Pro Smiley Kaufman, and I'm happy to announce that you can now hear me on Sports Grid Radio. Just in time for the Masters, I'm bringing my show, The Smiley Show, to Channel 159, where I'll catch up with other golfers, athletes, and celebrities. John Rahm becomes the fourth Spaniard to win at Augusta. Join me every Tuesday and Thursday at 7 a.m. and 1 p.m. in the East on Sports Grid Radio, channel 159 in your car, and on the all-new SiriusXM app. The Busted Open Podcast is now available on YouTube. This is Dave LaGreca, host of Busted Open, the number one pro wrestling show on the planet. You can now watch and listen to the award-winning Busted Open Podcast every single day on YouTube. Our best interviews, behind-the-scenes access, and some of our best content from the past. All available right now when you go to YouTube.com slash at Busted Open Podcast. Subscribe right now. Wake up! Wake up, everybody! This is Steve Phillips from the leadoff spot on MLB Network Radio. Join me and former Major League Baseball players Eduardo Perez and Xavier Scruggs as we react to all the latest news and scores across baseball and have plenty of fun along the way. Steve, you were so right about that. I don't know if anybody else thinks we're funny, but I think we're funny. Why are you putting us (laughs) or we into this? The leadoff spot, weekdays at 7 a.m. Eastern on MLB Network Radio, Channel 89, and on the SiriusXM app. Hi, this is Mike Tirico. Masters Radio returns Monday, April 8th on Channel 92 in the car and on the Sirius XM app. Radio Network. It's the fourth inning presented by Bet365. At Bet365, you can watch thousands of live games, build your own bet, and you can even make a bet while the game's still being played. 19-plus play responsibly, Ontario only. Yariel Rodriguez back out in his first major league start. He throws to Chris Bryant. 5-1 Blue Jays, the pitch. Low and away, ball one. The Blue Jays do have Bowden Francis warming up right now. Rodriguez's pitch count supposed to be around 70 to 75. Here's his 55th of the day. 
Swing and a miss by Bryant. One ball, one strike. I have to say that I was a little bit disappointed that Bowden Francis wasn't going to get another chance at starting. But after seeing Yariel Rodriguez, I am thrilled with what he's bringing to the table. The 1-1. Swing and a miss. Strike two. And John Schneider had talked yesterday about how effective Bowden was in a multi-inning relief role for them last year. Rodriguez coming up, Paulo Espino being optioned to AAA. So Francis still should be a big part of this staff. The one-two pitch. Outside, two and two. I'm Ben Schulman. To my left, Chris LaRue. Show Ali, our host today. Nick Blackmore, our producer, Andrew Adams, Tom Young, our technical directors. We'll look at the scores around baseball after the former Cub and Giant Chris Bryant hits. 2-2. Hit foul high in the air to right field. Rodriguez bouncing around on the rubber. I think he thought that 96-mile-per-hour four-seamer would beat Bryant. Two-two again. Swing and a miss. Fifth K of the day for Rodriguez. Bryant goes down on a slider. A beautiful backup slider from Yariel Rodriguez. We've seen guys swing through that so often. Not a great pitch from a pitcher, but a really tough pitch to hit. You expect it to break a lot more than it does. Just a spinner up there. Beautiful backup <laughs> breaking ball from Yariel Rodriguez. Used his slider for all five Ks so far. Pitch to Elias Diaz. Big hack and a miss. So and one. Let's take a look at the out-of-town scoreboard brought to you by St. Louis Bar and Grill. Devilishly good since Toronto first raised the trophy in 92. Join them for wings, ribs, beer, cocktails, and catch every play at your local St. Louis Bar and Grill. Download the app or visit stlouiswings.com for more details. Always devilishly good. First the pitch to the former pirate, Elias Diaz. Fouled back 0-2. Yankees finished up today in their first of two games with a rain out yesterday. They have a doubleheader in Cleveland today. They won 3-2 over the Cleveland Guardians. Close game. Yankees jumped out to a 3-0 lead, but the Guardians scored two in the sixth to make it a nail-biter. Oswaldo Cabrera, though, with his third homer of the season for the Yankees to score two runs. Trent Grisham with a run-scoring double play ball to open the scoring. 0-2 pitch, Diaz hits hard on the ground through the hole on the left side, a base hit into left field. A one-out knock for the Rockies who bring up Nolan Jones with a runner on. The servant was set up almost on the black for that slider. Yariel Rodriguez throws that thing almost middle-middle, backs up on him a little bit, and Diaz drills that thing on the ground into left field. Here is former Cleveland player, speaking of the Guardians, Nolan Jones. First pitch. Hit well to left field, a liner that sinks in front of Schneider. Left fielder will backhand it on a hop. Base hits on back-to-back -back pitches. Diaz up to second, Jones to first, two on with one out. As Francis continues to warm for the Blue Jays. Elsewhere on the St. Louis Barton Grill out of town scoreboard. Baltimore hosting Milwaukee in game two of that series after the Brewers dismantled the Orioles yesterday. Baltimore will give Jackson Holiday a rest. Jorge Mateo is going to start at second. Holiday still looking for his first major league hit. I believe 0 for his first 11. Brendan Rodgers is up for the Rockies. Two on, one out. 5-1 Blue Jays top of four. The pitch. Smoked foul right side. 0-1. I think Yariel has to realize that when you're going second, third time through the lineup, you have to start mixing in different looks. So I would love to see him mix in that split finger just a little bit more. He's been relying on the fastball slider for the most part. This is a transition back to being a starter for Rodriguez, who was a reliever in NPB. 0-1, waved that and missed. Strike two. And all you have to do is show that thing that you can throw it for a strike one, two, th maybe three times, and then it's always going to be in the back of that hitter's mind, and then you can go back to throwing fastball slider. Two-strike pitch. Missed high with the heater, one and two. 
Elsewhere on the St. Louis Bar and Grill out of town scoreboard, Red Sox host the Angels in game two after Los Angeles picked up a series opening win. Rodriguez kicks and fires. Rogers takes again high, two and two. And you can see these Rockies hitters are just a little bit too comfortable right now. He either has to move their feet with a fastball or start start to mix in that split, just like I said. Struck out Rodgers on a slider in the second. Rodriguez offers home. It's a heater for called strike three. Painted it on the inside edge. Sixth K of the day for Rodriguez. And there are two outs. And I love that pitch right there. Sinker on the inside part of the plate. Here comes John Schneider. What a day. 68 pitches for Yariel Rodriguez. Six Ks in three and two-thirds of one run ball. His day finished. The Blue Jays faithful giving him a standing ovation in his major league debut. Bowden Francis about to come on for Toronto. Rodriguez looking up into the crowd. Will acknowledge them with the tip of his cap. And we'll go over to our left. Here's Show Ali. Thank you very much, Ben. And before we check out that St. Louis Bar and Grill out-of-town scoreboard, uh, a reminder that Jay Stock follows every game. Nick Ashbourne is here at the Rogers Center. He and I will stick around here in the booth, and we have the post-game show both today and tomorrow. We'll throw out the numbers to call after the final out, or you can certainly text us if that's easier, 590-590. Name and location, the people's text line is always open. All right, let's start in Major League Baseball. One final already. The Yankees with the first win of the day. Their first of a split double header. New York beating Cleveland 3-2. Oswaldo Cabrera with a two-run jack as the game winner. That coming in the sixth inning. It's Saturday, which means lots of hockey coming your way. Last big hockey weekend of the regular season with the Stanley Cup playoffs starting very soon. Action on right now. Kraken at Stars. Dallas up one nothing in the first period intermission. Craig Smith with the goal for Dallas. We'll also get Jets at Avalanche this afternoon as well. Zeros right now. The puck drop of that game was just moments ago in Colorado. So zeros very early on in Denver. Islanders at Rangers already in the books. Isles were up 2-1 to one with a few minutes to go, but Artemi Panarin scoring the game-tying goal with minutes remaining in regulation, his 48th of the season. This one went to a shootout, and Vincent Trocek got the shootout winner to seal it at MSG. Rangers win 3-2 in the end uh, in New York. At 7 Eastern, we'll get a whole bunch of puck drops including Red Wings at Leafs. Austin Matthews sits at 68 goals. He'll face James Reimer in net tonight in his quest for 70. Watch the game on Sportsnet and the CBC. Afterwards, you can watch Leaf Stock with Bunkus and McKee on YouTube and Sportsnet+. Plus. Blue Jays baseball is brought to you by Crown Rest Protection. Back to the action down here at the Rogers Center. Here's Ben Schulman and Chris LaRue. Thank you very much, show. Two outs, runners on first and second, top of the fourth. 5-1 Blue Jays, Bowden Francis out of the pen. His pitch to L. Reese Montero, slow curve for strike one. First relief appearance of the season for Francis after two tough starts to begin the year. But last year out of the pen, Bowden in 20 relief appearances, a 1-7-3 ERA in over 36 innings. The 0-1. Low, 1-1. One He's trying to hold the line for Yariel Rodriguez, which currently sits at three and two-thirds, four hits, one earned run, one walk, six Ks. Although with two hits allowed this inning, Rodriguez responsible for both Elias Diaz on second and Nolan Jones on first. 1-1, one, one, down and away, 2-1. and one. Yariel Rodriguez and Chris Bassett just had a, a nice little moment in the dugout. They had a quick chat. Chris Bassett kind of punched him in the chest and probably saying, I'm proud of you guys. Good job. But it's nice to see those two with that interaction. Francis is 2-1. Slow curve hit in the air down the left field line. Schneider on the run, racing toward the corner. Dives! And he did not make the catch. It's a fair ball, but the runners had to wait, so it'll just go as a single. Schneider went full stretch a little bit out of our view, and that ball got down in fair territory just beyond him. Getting a look at it now. Schneider had to go all the way to the side warning track. Looked like for a second it was in his glove. But popped out. He went slamming into the sidewall and picked it up from beside him. So the base is loaded now. Still no runs in for the Rockies this inning. Brenton Doyle, who hit the home run for Colorado up. 
The pitch is smoked to third, caught on the line by IKF. What a play, and IKF takes a hit away to make it a scoreless inning for the Rockies. They strand three after three hits and go into the bottom of the fourth. It's 5-1 Blue Jays at Rogers Center. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center, streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. The Blue Jays are inviting you to work from dome. Put it in your calendar. 307 Weekday starts this season. You can work from dome with friends or coworkers at Rogers Center. It's a game changer. Make the ballpark your office for the afternoon. Work from Dome, 307 weekday starts. Let's touch base. Check out ticket options on bluejays.com slash work from dome. Everyone dreams of owning their own personal slice of heaven. Now you can, thanks to Fixed Rate Pizza by Pizza Pizza. Until the end of 2024, lock into an extra large four topping pizza at a fixed price of $17.99. No matter how bad food prices get this year, your pizza price stays. So why not say no to surge pricing and yes to fixed rate pizza? Order now from Pizza Pizza. Go to pizzapizza.ca. At Bet365, we don't do ordinary. That's why we introduced in-game betting. Because when the game starts, the action doesn't stop. With in-game betting, you can wager on game props, player props, totals, and the money line. And remember, in-game, you can track your same-day parlay with the option to cash out. Check out in-game betting and find out why. It's never ordinary at Bet365. Must be 19 years or older. Ontario only. Please play responsibly. If you or someone you know has concerns about gambling, visit connexontario.ca. This is Jose Berrios, and you're listening to Toronto Blue Jays Baseball on the Sportnet Radio Network. Welcome to the Timbermar Broadcast Group, bottom of the fourth inning. 5-1 Blue Jays in game two of the series between Toronto and Colorado. The guy who made the great catch to end the inning, Isaiah Kiner-Falefa, leads off the bottom of the fourth. IKF 0 for 1 today, 8 9 1 for the Blue Jays, with Brian Servin due up next and George Springer after him. Daniel Hudson wipes his hand on the back of his pant leg to dry it up, and now the right hander into the wind, his pitch to IKF. Broken bat looper foul down the right side, the barrel of his bat. On the left field turf, that bat completely sawed off. IKF just hands a handle back to the bat boy, and that barrel went way beyond third baseman Ryan McMahon. That was actually pretty close to McMahon. He kind of just shuffled to the left just a little bit, but you rarely see a barrel go that hard and that far. New piece of wood for IKF. Here's the 0-1. High fly ball, left center field. Doyle, the center fielder, on the run. It gets down in between him and Jones. IKF around first, digs for second, slides in with a leadoff double. Man, does he love hitting in the Rogers Center. (laughs) IKF with an extra base hit again here on the homestand. And IKF was absolutely motoring into second base. He's got a little bit of wheels. And four games played at Rogers Center for IKF because he didn't play in the Wednesday series finale against Seattle. He's got an extra base hit in every single one. Five-one Blue Jays. Brian Servins to the plate. Second baseman Rogers close to the bag, holding on IKF. Hudson looks back at Kiner Falefa and pitches to Servin. Misses outside one and zero. Servin spent 11 games with the Rockies last year. 38 at the AAA level. Over 60 games with the Rockies in 2022. 1-0. Downstairs, two balls, no strikes. And a big break for the Toronto Blue Jays and Yariel Rodriguez that we didn't explain. We didn't have much time after that Davis Schneider play. But Elias Diaz was on second base, and he reacted like there was less than two outs. Yeah, there he was went to two tag. outs. He should have easily scored, and he didn't. He ended up at third base. The 2-0. Swing and a miss by Servin. So yeah, it was two outs, first and second. Looper down the left field line. Doesn't matter if it's fair or foul. Going to be caught or not with two outs. 
you can't get doubled off. He had to be going on contact. He waited. And because of that, no runs came in for the Rockies, who still trail 5-1. 2-1 pitch to Servin. Shows bunt, pops it up, caught by the pitcher, Hudson. That's the first out. On the fourth pitch of the at-bat, Servin tossed the bunt out there late, almost more like a bunt for base hit attempt just in how late he put it out there, even though I think it was more of a sacrifice attempt. And IKF wisely got back to the back. Servin's the first out. That might have been one of the easier outs in Hudson's career. Just a weak little line drive looper right back at him. So here's George Springer, runner on second, one out. Hudson deals. Low and inside, ball one. 5-1 Blue Jays, bottom of the fourth. Springer with two hits today to go back over 200 in batting average on the season. Hitting 211 right now. The 1-0. Line shot, caught at second by a leaping Brendan Rodgers. That was actually prob probably the hardest hit ball by Springer today, but hit to the worst spot. He's retired for the first time, two outs. Yeah, really good approach from Springer. The thing that I love about that at bat is he tried to use the big part of the field. We've seen him do that a few times recently, and that shows you that he's seeing the ball better, and he has a really good approach. But with Springer down there, lining that ball right at Brendan Rodgers, here comes Flatty, 0 for 2. Runner on second, two outs, 5-1 Blue Jays, bottom of the fourth, the pitch. Called strike on the inside edge. Tough pitch. Vlad didn't like that call, but that was a good sinker right on the inside part of that plate, almost on the black. That's a pitcher's pitch right there. Guerrero shaking his head as he tapped the plate. Now rests the bat on his right shoulder. Twirling it around as he waits for the 0-1. Here it comes. Down and away. Ball one. A good runner out at second in IKF. Guerrero with a single single to the outfield likely scores Kiner Falefa. 1-1. One, one. Pounded into the ground is short on two hops, backhanded by Tovar. Crow hop and a lob to first, retires Guerrero and the side. The Blue Jays go scoreless in the home half of the fourth after a leadoff double by IKF. They lead 5-1, headed to the fifth. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball, brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center, streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. The greatest guitarist is Eddie Van Halen. What about Prince? You have to include Slash and Jimmy Page. B.B. King and Bonnie Raitt. The Edge changed everything. The debate continues with rebellious riffs and six-string solos on the SiriusXM Guitar Greats channel. All hail International Guitar Month. Sirius XM Guitar Grades on Channel 107 and year-round on the Sirius XM app. Get closer to everything that moves you, wherever you are. Fantasy Sports Radio is helping you win your fantasy leagues right now on Channel 87. It's a home run for Ronald Acuna. From in-season fantasy baseball management to daily fantasy basketball to getting you ready for the NFL draft, Fantasy Sports Radio is here to help you dominate. How you manage your team day in and day out will be the difference in where you finish in 2024. Fantasy Sports Radio, your home for fantasy sports. Channel 87 and on the all-new Sirius XM app. Blue Jays are in flight, leading 3 nothing. Blue Jays fans, this is Ross Atkins, and you're listening to Blue Jays Baseball on Sirius XM. That radio network. It's the fifth inning brought to you by Desjardins Insurance, helping Canadians through it all. Desjardins Insurance, insurance with a heart so big it shows. Visit Desjardins.com slash heart today. Bowden Francis into the wind. His pitch to Charlie Blackman called strike one. I'm Ben Schulman alongside Chris LaRue. Top of the fifth starts with the Blue Jays up 5-1 to one on the Rockies. 0-1 oh, to Blackman. Hit foul into the netting down the left field line. 0-2. Oh, Bushy beard, long hair for Blackman. High black as usual as he looks out to Francis. Who's sporting a bit of a different look. 0-2 oh, pitch. Swing and a miss, strike three. First K of the day for Francis, who has cut off the long hair. He is very short in the back, a little bit of hair on top that's hidden by his cap. But he said, look, he tried for the long hair, but 
He had much better numbers with short hair last year. <laughs> Didn't like his numbers. These are his words, not mine. Didn't like his numbers with long hair in 22, so he's back to being a short hair guy. First pitch to Ezekiel Tovar. Fouled off 0-1. Well, he's pitching well so far with the... Uh, with, is it a shaved head? Have you seen him without his hat He's on? He's got hair on the top. Oh, it's just like a, not it's on like the back and sides. It's kind of cut. like there's a fade going on. 0-1. Oh, Outside. Servin, though, pumping the glove. He likes the pitch there, the slider that ran away from Tovar. 1-1. One and one. Francis from the third base side of the rubber. A little abbreviated windup in the 1-1. One, Slow curveball, called strike, might have got the benefit of a call there. It's one and two. Yeah, that was a little bit high, a little bit out of that strike box there, but a good pitch nonetheless. I'd come with a nice heater right here. Just got a strikeout on a heater a moment ago. One, two to Tovar. Fastball fouled off the front foot. A little bit middle, middle. If that ball's elevated just a little bit, that was a 95 mile an hour fastball. If it's elevated above the belt, Tovar swinging right through that thing. After Tovar, we'll look at the St. Louis Bar and Grill out-of-town scoreboard. No outs, or one out, nobody on. One, two. Swing and a miss. Blew the fastball by him. Two down. And where was that, Ben? Elevated above the belt. You are a genius, my friend. <laughs> Let's look at the St. Louis Bar and Grill out-of-town scoreboard. Baltimore has opened up the scoring in game two against Milwaukee. Two home runs in the bottom of the first inning have the Orioles up 3-0. Ryan Mountcastle and Jordan Westberg homering two batters apart. Mountcastle a solo shot. Westberg a two-run shot, scoring him and Anthony Santander. 3-0 Baltimore. First pitch outside to Ryan McMahon, 1-0. and At the drop, it's the visiting Giants up 1-0. Michael Conforto with an RBI double to score Lamont Wade in the top of the first. 1-0 for San Francisco. 1-0 pitch called outside against McMahon. Borderline from Francis. It's 2-0. Over at Fenway Park, it's the Red Sox with a strong start. Three runs for them in the bottom of the first. 2-0. McMahon takes high. 3-0. Masataka Yoshida singled in Willier Abreu before Tristan Casas homered in Yoshida. Third home run of the year for Casas. 3-0 Sox. Bottom of one. They're still hitting. 3-0 pitch here to Ryan McMahon. Four-pitch walk with two outs. That'll extend the top of the fifth inning. And that's the last thing you want to do is get the first two guys out quickly and then walk that third guy on four pitches. Bowden Francis knows that. He needs to get back and locked in here for this next batter. Batting in the place of Chris Bryant, Michael Tolia will hit. He took over defensively for Bryant in the bottom of the fourth inning. Chris Bryant did crash into the fence in right field earlier in the game. Hope that he's doing okay, but he is removed. First pitch to the switch hitter, Tolia, taken for strike one. Tolia was removed early in yesterday's game. Had a slide into home plate. I mean, not early, but he was removed earlier than the end of the game, taken out in the back three innings. With a runner on first, the 0-1. Check swing, pitch a little bit outside, appeal to third. He went around, says third base umpire Manny Gonzalez, nothing in two. And there was that split with the good downward action. He needs to mix that in more often. I told him the other day, that thing is nasty. And he looked at me, he was like, really? Really? <laughs> it's like, yeah, buddy, that thing is nasty. Two outs, two strikes, runner on first, the pitch. Swing and a miss, strike three. Beat him with the fastball. Three strikeouts in the inning for Francis, who strands the walk and keeps the Blue Jays up 5-1 halfway through the game. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. They are among the greatest to ever play their sports. Caitlin Clark is the all-time scoring leader. They are legends and icons. Larry Bird hit the chop with those second spot. I know how he did it. And you can hear them right now on the all-new Sirius XM app. We are here with Iowa superstar Caitlin Clark. I'm so focused on winning. It's never anything I ever take for granted. Here comes Larry Bird, the Hall of Famer, and he just won Legend of the Year. Legend of the Year, isn't that something? For access to the game's greats, we lie on the leader in sports audio. Sirius XM and the Sirius XM app. The NASCAR Cup Series is on Sirius XM. Let's go, baby! 
We're back on the track. Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Eastern. It's the Auto Trader Echo Park Automotive 400. From Texas Motor Speedway. On Sirius XM NASCAR Radio Channel 90. In the car. And on the all-new Sirius XM app. Oh, yeah. Get closer to everything that moves you wherever you are with the Sirius XM app. Let's make some smoke and drink some beer. Yeah. Blue Jays fans, your manager, Sean Schneider, joins MLB Network Radio's Power Alley every other Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern. I got all the confidence in the world in Joe Romano. I've known him for a long time. I know his demeanor. And I, I always say when you're talking about a closer, giving up a couple runs in the ninth inning, it's just so much more magnified than a starting pitcher giving up a two-run homer. Managers at the mic on MLB Network Radio. Sirius XM 89 and the SXM app. Fantasy Sports Radio is helping you win whichever fantasy sport you play. Right now on Channel 87 and on the all-new Sirius XM app. Bo Bichette leads off for the Blue Jays. Bottom of the fifth inning, 5-1 Toronto over Colorado. Bichette, Daniel Vogelback, Kevin Biggio to hit against Dakota Hudson. Appreciate you hanging out with us on this Saturday afternoon. I'm Ben Schulman. To my left, Chris LaRue. We're in the Timbermark broadcast booth. Bichette with a single and a run scored in the first inning. Grounded out to first on a check swing in the second. Hudson's first offering. In there for strike one. We'll take a look at the injury report for the Blue Jays after Bichette hits. Toronto hasn't scored since that first inning, but still holds a comfortable lead. A one, smoked foul. Carlos Fabless with a wake-up call. Third base coach for the Blue Jays backed out of the way of the liner. 0-2. Oh Bichette pounds his barrel against the back of the plate twice and now gets ready to go. Two-strike pitch from Hudson. Fouled off the front foot. Bo will take a walk. That ball rolling all the way, maybe halfway up the first baseline. So they'll give a new baseball there to Hudson. Yeah, Dakota Hudson, just so much movement on that fastball. That sinker just starts right down the middle, and it's giving Bo Bichette fits. Ran right back in on his hands. He had a tough time fouling that ball off. 0-2 again. Down and away, ball one. For the injury report today, we'll check on the performance of the four Blue Jays players who appeared for the Buffalo Bisons in game one of their doubleheader against the Rochester Red Wings. One, two. Bounce to the plate, two balls, two strikes. Red Wings, the Washington Nationals AAA affiliate. Bichette battling from 0-2 to an even count at two balls, two strikes. Hudson brings his glove down. Steps and fires. Swing and a miss. Changed up speeds on Bichette again. The slider in the zone beats Bo. One out. Let's look at the injury report brought to you by Burbanis Pryra Personal Injury Lawyers. If life has thrown you a curveball and you're striking out with your insurance company, get ahead of the count. Call Bergmanis Pryra Personal Injury Lawyers. You focus on getting better, and Bergmanis Pryra will take care of the rest. Visit bplawyers.ca. Alec Mano with his second rehab start after some shoulder soreness slowed down his spring. Three and a third today. Eight hits, four and runs, one walk, four Ks. First pitch to Daniel Vogelback, low ball one. Does it say what his velo was? So in the first inning, it was kind of that 95, 96, but it ended on the day a little bit below 93. His velo kind of went down and down as the day went on. 1-0 pitch, called strike, 1-1. One I mean, one. Keep in mind, it was a brutal day outside. It is cold. It looked even colder in Buffalo. And better control from Manoa, although he surrendered eight hits and three and a third. 1-1 one, one pitch to Vogelback with one out. Swing and a miss, strike two. Eric Swanson came in in relief. Two-thirds of an inning, two hits, one earned run, one strikeout. Did give up a soft hit to start the inning. And then stolen bases galore for the Red Wings. They were just running wild, knowing that some of these rehab pitchers, too, probably weren't too concerned with the run game. Two-out single would bring in a run. One-two inside to Vogue. Two balls, two strikes. Jordan Romano came in, walked two, but recorded two outs, including a strikeout in a scoreless two-thirds of an inning. Danny Jansen caught the whole game today. Did go 0 for 4 with two Ks at the plate. 2-2. Two -two. 
Downstairs ball three. Vogelback, who has a walk and a strikeout, has worked to full count against Hudson. And that's the injury report. Those are the four guys who featured in the game for Buffalo. We'll see. You know, expected Danny Jansen to catch one more game, maybe coming up tomorrow. But we'll see who's active coming Monday when the Yankees are in town. 3-2 pitch. Vogelback hits a bouncer to second, picked up on three hops by Rogers, a step into throw to first, two outs. Did they say that Danny Jansen needs to catch nine innings before he comes back up here? They didn't say it, but I would guess that they probably want that. Because when asked, asked today if when Jansen returns, he can resume regular, maybe even full-time catching duties for the Blue Jays, they, John Steiner said that was the goal. They want him to be ready to go to play frequently for Toronto. Two outs, the pitch to Kevin Biggio. Called strike one. And catching, of course, is a lot like starting pitching where you need to build up. You can't just catch nine innings out of the blue. You're going to be beaten up for the next four or five days. He did catch seven innings in the first game of the doubleheader today. 0-1. Swinging a line shot foul into the screen. Nothing in two. Two outs, space is empty. Bottom five, 5-1 five, Toronto. Seven-game hit streak on the line for Biggio, tied for the longest of his career. The 0-2. Bounce to the plate. This is by far the best start to a season Kevin Biggio has ever gotten off to. And although he had struggled over the last couple years at the plate, he was really effective in 19 and 2020 for the Blue Jays too. But never has it even close to the 314 average he came into today with. 1-2 pitch, called strike three, top of the zone. Second strike out of the frame produces the first 1-2-3 inning of the day for Dakota Hudson at the end of 5-5-1 five, five, Blue Jays at Rogers Center. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. We're two men in a truck, the movers who care. You never know when cardiac arrest can happen. That's why each and every one of our trucks carries a life-saving Mikey defibrillator as part of our Mikey on Board program. Whether we're on the highway or in front of your house, we're prepared to help anyone whose heart may skip a beat. The Mikey Network has saved many lives, making Mikeys accessible to the public. And now they're on board our trucks. We're two men in a truck. Two men and a truck, the movers who care. At Crown Rust Control, protection runs deep. Because every Crown Rust Control Center is owned by a local family who cares beyond business. Your Crown Rust Control is 100% committed to their product, to you, to their community, which is your community. Protecting you and what matters to you is equally important as protecting your vehicle. Did you know spring's the best time of year to protect your vehicle from rust? For a special spring offer, find your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center at crown.com. by your side Got a heart so big On this you can rely No mountains too tall For the strong boots to climb I am by your side That was Desjardins Insurance Playing insurance with a heart so big it shows Tune in for your auto and home coverage at Desjardins.com slash heart This is Toronto Blue Jays baseball. A drive to deep center field. Trout at the wall and watches it sail. On Sportsnet 590 The Fan and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Top of the sixth inning in downtown Toronto. 5-1 for the Blue Jays over the Rockies. And Bowden Francis still on the rubber. It's his third inning of work out of the pen for Toronto. His pitch to Elias Diaz. Slow curveball misses outside. 1-0. The sixth inning is brought to you by Desjardins Insurance, helping Canadians through it all. Desjardins Insurance, insurance with a heart so big it shows. Visit Desjardins.com slash heart today. 1-0. Swing and a miss. Strike one. I'm Ben Schulman. To my left, our host today, Show Ali. And to his left, Chris LaRue. Technical directors are Tom Young and Andrew Adams. Producer Nick Blackmore. 1-1. In there, strike two. As much as I think Bowden Francis is a major league starter, he is a really good major league reliever. And that's nothing to scoff at. Francis making his first relief appearance of the season. Pushes down some dirt with his left foot. 
Now gets ready to go into the wide. His pitch to Diaz. Breaking ball in the dirt. Francis struck out all three of his outs recorded in the fifth inning. Three strikeouts and a walk that frame. I think the thing that Bowden forgot his first couple of starts was that you need to throw inside. We talked about this on the broadcast, is, is he has to throw inside as a starter. 2-2, two, two, breaking ball hit foul off to the right of us and drops just in front of the 200 level into the 100 level lower bowl. And maybe he's a maybe he's a little bit tentative with throwing inside. Some pitchers are. They just don't like coming inside. But as a reliever, you don't really have to throw inside. He can just throw that 96-mile-an-hour fastball in the outside part of the plate, flip in the breaking ball, 20 pitches, and his day is done. Here's his 26th of the day. Hit in the air to right field, shallow and slicing toward the line. Vladdy back behind him, slides, but he can't make the over-the-shoulder catch. Guerrero being helped up by Springer after sliding into the padding. A pat on the back from Springer for the Guerrero effort, still 2-2. Two and two. That was an incredible attempt. Just full tilt, almost directly out to right field in foul territory, almost like a receiver, and he barely missed that ball by a couple of inches, maybe. Slamming into that short wall on, in foul territory in right field. What an attempt. Actually off the tip of his glove. Vladdy pounding his right hand into the glove. It's the glove's fault. It is the glove's fault. <laughs> Always is. First batter of the top of the sixth. 5-1 Blue Jays. 2-2 two -two pitch to Diaz. Hit foul into the netting. Quite a battle being put up right now by Elias Diaz. That was pitch number seven that he sent into the screen. And I would love to see a sinker in, but I don't think I'll see one. John Schneider, in talking about the difference between Bowden as a starter and reliever, did mention that he thought the stuff was crisper as a reliever. 2-2 two -two breaking ball bounces all the way to the backstop. Full count. And there was some talk going into the season second time through third time through is the movement is the velocity the same for francis as it is first time through the order three two diaz hits foul he's going to make this a double digit pitch plate appearance that was the ninth tenth coming here to lead off the top of the sixth well i think like we talked about with yariel rodriguez second third time through the order you have to start mixing in different looks different locations throwing in throwing up that's the biggest thing with starting pitching. Payoff. High ball four. Diaz wins the 10-pitch battle to start the sixth. Really good A-B right there from Diaz. Fouling off some tough pitches from Bowden Francis. And finally just laying off that belt-high heater just above that strike box. Good A-B. So Diaz aboard. Here's Nolan Jones, who's yet to be retired today. A walk and a single. First time he's facing Francis. The right on left pitch. Down low ball one. 5 1 Toronto. Runner on first. No outs top of the sixth. Time to check on the St. Louis Bar and Grill out of town scoreboard where the Brewers have inched closer at Camden Yards. It's now 3 1 for Baltimore over Milwaukee. Reese Hoskins with his third home run of the season, a solo shot in the top of the second. And the next pitch there to Jones is called strike one. Francis looking in, peeks over his left shoulder at first base. Kicks and fires. Slow breaking ball outside, two and one. That was actually the splitter, the off speed pitch from Francis. Yeah, that was a good thought right there. I was thinking that same pitch. He just missed his spot just a little bit, left it up and out. Servin had that glove down and away. Servin sets up down and away again, the pitch. Bounced at the back foot. Three balls and one strike. Instead of going down and away, Francis went down and in with that curveball. And Jones here is in the driver's seat. Three balls, one strike. Yeah, he choked that thing off, tried to do a little bit too much with it. Instead of throwing that pitch down and away, kind of bounced it, almost hit Jones in the foot. A left-handed hitter. Francis just walked Diaz to lead off the inning. Two walks in the appearance so far. 3-1 pitch. Heater for strike two. Got a break there. That pitch looked outside. Full count. That could have that could have been 
outing changing for Bowden Francis if that ball wasn't called a strike there. Clearly ball four, almost a half a ball off the plate. Way outside of that strike box. That was a gift for Bowden. His 3-2. Fouled back into the netting. Couple guys walking around, stretching in the Blue Jay pen. But not much action. Everyone outside of Mitch White should be available today. 3-2 to Jones. Line drive. Fair ball down the left field line, rolling toward the corner. It beats Schneider to the wall. Around second and into third, Diaz. Up to second, Jones. And the Rockies are threatening here. Second and third, nobody out. 5-1 Toronto, top of the sixth. And this is where Bowden Francis has to learn to, to mix in other looks, either throw inside or throw that split. He hasn't done that yet. Here comes Pete Walker. That was a fastball up and away that Jones rode down the left field line and into the corner for his second double of the series and his fourth of the season. Jones with a good piece of hitting, just filleting that thing right down the line. IKF was way off the line at third base. And he kind of just dumps that thing into the corner there. Really nice piece of hitting. Brendan Rodgers to hit next. The only guy in this lineup who hasn't seen Francis so far today. The Blue Jays are starting to get the lefty loose. Tim Meza is throwing in the left field bullpen. Bottom three hitters, the next three for the Rockies in their order, bat right, but then you get two left-handed hitters out of the first three at the top of the order. Infield plays back with the Blue Jays up 5-1, tack play at the plate. Nobody out, second and third. The pitch to Rodgers is hit foul, high over the netting to the right side, out of play, 0-1. Rockies only run so far today, a Doyle homer, 0-1 pitch is the breaking ball down and away, 1-1. One and one. On a ground ball up the middle, you'd figure Diaz probably scores, although he's not the speediest guy, he was actually thrown out twice between third and home yesterday. 1-1. One, one. Fouled back into the netting, 1-2. Corners aren't necessarily in for the Blue Jays, but Guerrero's probably halfway. And Kiner Falef on a ball hit to third. That would be pretty risky for Diaz to try and score. Kiner Falefa maybe 10 feet back of that third base back. 1-2. Line shot foul over the head of the third base coach, Warren Schaefer, and into the netting. 1-2. And, and Bowden Francis got lucky right there. That was a, a hanger of a breaking ball on the inside part of the plate. It was supposed to be down and away. And... Rodgers just missed it, lining it about 20 feet foul. An inning and a third so far for Francis. Scoreless, but two hits and two walks. The pitch, line shot over the head of Guerrero. Fair ball down the right field line. Diaz in to score. Jones gets the wave. He'll score without a throw. It's a ball game once again. 5-3 to three on the two-run single by Brendan Rodgers. And again, Bowden needs to learn to mix in fastballs inside. He needs to mix in that, that splitty. We haven't seen this, the splitty maybe once today, and it was a pretty good one, too. You have to throw that thing. You have to throw off-speed pitches and fastball counts. And Bowden, he just hasn't done that today yet. Tim Mays is still getting loose. Next bound visit for the Blue Jays would likely be to bring him in. Pitch to Al Reis Montero. Nobody out, runner on first. It's outside ball one. Walk double single in this inning for the Rockies, who have scored the last three runs in this game. 5-3, Toronto over Colorado, top of the sixth. The 1-0. Swing and a miss. Beat him with the fastball down the middle. Strike one. Game two of this series. Rockies won game one. Blue Jays trying to tie it up and set up a rubber match tomorrow. 1-1. One, one. Hit in the air to right. Not very deep. Springer goes in. Now jogs to his left. Makes the catch. And there is the first out of the top of the sixth inning. 
you have to make good pitches to this Rockies lineup. There are some good hitters on this team. Again, it's their pitching that is that is leading to the struggles of this team. The offense is very, very good. Brenton Doyle to the plate. Nine hitters, center fielder who's one for two today, a solo home run in a scorched liner that was caught by IKF. First pitch is bounced to third. IKF will go the short way to second for one, back to first, double play. 5-4-3 to end the inning. Francis recovers after surrendering the two runs, but it is a big two runs for the Rockies. Two on two hits, they leave no one on. 5-3, Toronto, middle of the sixth. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball, brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center, streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Feel the energy. Blast the loud bang. And the impact of Sirius XM Octane. Immerse yourself in a community of hard rock extremists. World premieres. Live performances. And artist takeovers. A giant thank you to the entire Octane community for keeping rock alive. The South Carolina Gamecocks are on top of the women's college basketball world yet again. Perfection for South Carolina. 38 games, 38 wins. We're reacting to the perfect season and talking to the biggest names right here on Channel 374. Congratulations, Coach Saley. What does this particular title mean to you? This title is pretty special because it was unexpected. Keep it locked into Sirius XM SEC Radio as we continue to break it all down and celebrate the Gamecocks' third national title. Hey, baseball fans, NBA Radio is your home for the best 24-7 hoops talk. LeBron, three for the tie. It's good! Hear nonstop talk from our experts every day and the best games every night as we get you ready for the playoffs and the quest to raise the Larry O'Brien Trophy. After 47 years, the Denver Nuggets are finally NBA champions. Don't miss a moment on Sirius XM NBA Radio, Channel 86, in the car, and on the brand new Sirius XM app. In season or out of season, the number one place for college sports is Sirius XM College Sports Radio, Channel 84. Stone. David Schneider leads off the bottom of the sixth. Five three Blue Jays over Rockies. Deho- Dakota Hudson still the starter on the rubber for Colorado. The pitch called strike one. Hudson gave up five runs in the first inning. First one on an RBI walk by Schneider, but has stuck around here into the sixth. Veteran right-hander into the wind. His 0-1. Called strike two. Just grabbed the outside part of the zone. I'm Ben Schulman alongside Chris LaRue. Schneider, then Dalton Varsha, then Isaiah Kiner Falefa for Toronto this inning. 0 oh, 2. A hair outside, ball one. Patient day for Schneider. He's walked twice. An RBI and a run scored, both coming in the first. Next offering from Hudson. Schneider swings and grounds the ball to third. Picked up by McMahon, who will toss over to first and beat the sprinting Schneider. One out. Another good fastball from Hudson, just tying up Schneider, hitting a weak ground ball to third base. The fact that he's still in this game in the sixth inning after giving up five runs in the first inning is its almost a miracle. But that's that sinker today has just been unhittable outside of the first inning. The pitch to Dalton Varsho, foul tipped back, strike one. One out, base is empty, 5-3 Blue Jays, bottom of the sixth. Varsho hit the grand slam, he's the reason the Blue Jays are on top. The 0-1, down and in, one ball, one strike. Victor Vodnik, right-handed reliever, getting loose for the Rockies. They had a guy up in the first inning and haven't brought anyone up since. Until now. 1-1. High and outside. Two balls, one strike. Tim Meza throwing periodically for the Blue Jays in the left field bullpen. Likely to come in next inning. 2-1. 
called strike. A gift there. That pitch was outside. It's two and two. And Varsho quickly looks back and questions that call. Clearly, that was a ball. That was about a ball off the plate. Tough break for Varsho. Instead of 3 1, the 2 2 pitch. Fouled off. Tomorrow marks the first Junior Jays of the season. Junior Jays opening day. Bring the whole family to the ballpark for a day packed with excitement. Enjoy games, prizes, artists, and much more. Be sure to stick around for post game where kids 14 and under can run the bases. Go to bluejays.com slash junior jays and get your tickets today. 2 2 again. Varsho fights off another one. This time foul to the left. This looks like the last batter potentially for Hudson, certainly the last inning. Here's the right-hander's 95th pitch of the day. Foul ball smoked into the seats in the second deck down the right field line. Varsho hit that ball 107 miles an hour, but maybe 200 feet wide <laughs> of the field of play. Well, that slider was in off the plate. There wasn't much he could do with it, but do that. 2-2 two, two once more. Swing and a miss. Behind the fastball on eight pitches. Varsho strikes out. Fifth K of the day for Hudson. And there are two down. Another good sinker. That ball started right down the middle of the plate and ended up almost on the black. Really good movement. Really good sink. Since the first inning, since the end of the first inning, Hudson has really been on. He's been a tough, tough pitcher. One of the few guys to hit him since then, Isaiah Kiner-Falefa, who's up right now, one for two with a double that came in the fourth. The pitch. Called strike one. IKF2 has had quite the defensive day. He started two double plays, one on a hot shot that he picked on one bounce, and he caught a hard line drive with the bases loaded to end an inning for the Rockies. 0-1 to the third baseman. Inside, 1-1. One and one. The right-handed hitter from Hawaii awaits a 1-1 pitch. Called strike two. That zone is getting bigger. Maybe, you know, the dinner reservation of <laughs> Nestor it is Saturday. Saturday. It is a Saturday. It is closer and closer. <laughs> Although cold day, not a day you want to walk around. 1-2 pitch. That one outside for sure, a little bit high as well, two and two. Although Diaz really is doing a good job of framing those pitches, and they are moving all over the place. Tough pitcher to call if you're an umpire. Hudson's 101st pitch of the afternoon. Bounce to the plate, three and two. IKF taps the far corner, then near corner of the plate. Spins the bat around, raises it above his right shoulder. Twirling it around, he awaits the 3 2 with two outs and nobody on. The pitch. Line drive to second, caught by Rogers, hit right at him. Smoked by IKF, over 100 off the bat, but a 1 2 3 inning for Hudson, who's likely done after six innings of five run ball. Ball holds the Blue Jays scoreless in the final five. We'll go to the seventh, 5 3 Toronto at Rogers Center. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball brought to you by your local family owned Crown Rust Control Center, streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Timber Mart is Canada's building center, a solid neighbor to call upon when you've got a job to do. Your dependable home improvement store that offers the added value of Air Miles Reward Miles with every purchase of $15 or more. Visit TimberMart.ca. At Crown Rust Control Center, protection runs deep because every Crown Rust Control Center is owned by a local family who cares beyond business. Your Crown Rust Control Center is 100% committed to their product, to you, to their community, which is your community. Community. Protecting you and what matters to you is equally important as protecting your vehicle. Did you know spring's the best time of year to protect your vehicle from rust? For a special spring offer, find your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center at crown.com. 
If you're looking for a fun day, did you know the day before Monday? Sunday. You can paint your face. Come and meet Ace and run base to base. So many things to do. You can bring your crew and even mom and dad too. Sundays are for Junior Jays. And with all kinds of cool new games and activities in the exciting outfield district areas, there's no end to the family fun you'll have. If you're feeling the song, grab your dad or mom, visit BlueJays.com. Sunday. Timber Mart always has plans to help you with your plans. Your home, your cottage, your garage, whatever needs your attention first, check the most visited spot on our website for ready-to-order plans to get the job done with Canada's Building Centre. Visit TimberMart.ca. This is Toronto Blue Jays Baseball. Sprinting back, Varsho curling at the track, he leaps, and he made the catch! On Sportsnet 590 The Fan and the Sportsnet Radio Network. 5-3 Blue Jays, top of the seventh inning. Charlie Blackman, Ezekiel Tovar, and Ryan McMahon to bat for Colorado. Welcome back to Rogers Center in downtown Toronto. I'm Ben Schulman. To my left is Chris LaRue. And the left-hander coming on with two lefties out of those three hitting for the Rockies this inning. Tim Meza will make his first appearance of the series and first appearance since Wednesday when he gave up the go-ahead home run to Cal Raleigh in extra innings against the Mariners. Meza against Charlie Blackman here to start the seventh, the pitch. Sinker in there at 91, strike one. And we've seen a little bit of a dip in velo from Tim Meza early on in this season. But most importantly, a little bit of a dip in command as well. Next pitch, breaks the bat. It's caught by Meza on a bounce. Barrel whizzes past him. He sprints to first and underhands it for the first out. He absolutely sawed off Blackman. Had to dodge the debris and make the play. Yeah, that was dangerous right there. Barrel coming right at Tim Meza. Well, not right at him, but close enough. Really good pitch, though, up and in. I don't think Tim Meza moved. Did he even see that bat coming at him? <laughs> he was locked in on the ball, I guess. About half the barrel landed off to his left. <laughs> close enough. One out in the pitch to Ezekiel Tovar. High ball one. But to your point, while a lot of focus has gone on his sinker going from 93 and a half to about 91 and a half so far this year his walk rate has more than tripled to start the year two 1-0 popped up foul right side into the seats one and one he's always been really good at burying that slider back foot to righties and he just hasn't been able to do that this year that's that's the biggest concern that i have it's the command of that slider get ahead with the fastball and then he then he's always been able to bury that slider one one fouled back one and two and we'll probably see it here a, a buried slider back foot tim Meza was so good for the blue jays last year one of the best left-handed relievers in baseball one of the best in all of baseball in terms of stranding runners here's one two fastball strike three pitching backwards there he surprises tovar with the inside heat two down i like that surprise me probably surprised tovar that was a great pitch 93 on the black on the inside part of the plate and right on cue meza is locked in with all kinds of command john schneider had mentioned yesterday that they are not losing faith in tim meza just because of a tough start he's been too important for them for too long first pitch is called strike one to Ryan McMahon. Mays of the longest tenured Blue Jay in a Toronto draft pick in 2013. 0 1. Slider just misses. One ball, one strike. That was actually a great slider. A lot of movement. It was pretty hard at 87 miles an hour. We haven't seen that at all this year. 1 1 pitch, bounced to short, picked up by Bichette. Crow hop, throw to first. 1 2 3 inning for Tim Meza. Very tidy as he sends us off to the seventh inning stretch with Toronto leading 5 to 3 at home. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball brought to you by your local family owned Crown Rust Control Center streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. When you have an iconic look like Danny Jansen, picking new glasses can be tough. Too big. Too small, too cool, too much, too 90s, too futuristic. I think I'm just going to stick with the originals. These are working just fine. He is really seeing the ball well. Your friends will do a double take when they see you in your Danny Jansen new blue replica jersey and glasses. And he's got some style. On Monday, April 29th, the first 15,000 fans will receive a Jano bundle. For tickets, visit BlueJays.com. Two 
www.truck.ca So when you gotta move, when you gotta move, all moving day, all moving day. Think two in a truck, two in a truck. Dot ca, dot ca. Cause all of us movers, all of us movers, are not the same. So that's our company name. Two men in a truck. Dot ca. We're lots of men with lots of trucks. So give us a call today. I am by your side. Got a heart so big. On this you can rely. No mountains too tall for the strong boots to climb. I am by your side. That was Desjardins Insurance. Playing insurance with a heart so big it shows. Tune in for your auto and home coverage at Desjardins.com slash heart. This is Toronto Blue Jays baseball. Bases loaded. The 0-2 swung on and missed. Strike three. Sportsnet 590 The Fan and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Welcome to the Timber Mart Broadcast Booth. Bottom of the seventh inning, Blue Jays leading 5-3, to three, and Bud Black will go into his bullpen for the first time today. The Rockies bring on right-hander Victor Vodnik to replace Dakota Hudson, who went six innings, did give up five runs, but all five of those in the first inning settled down after that, and now Vodnik tasked with keeping it close a right-hander who averages around 97 on his four-seam fastball. Slider and change to complement it. His pitch to Brian Servin is that heater at 97 for strike one. Again, I'm Ben Schulman alongside Chris LaRue. Blue Jays haven't had a lot going on, Chris, since the top of the first or bottom of the first, I should say. Next pitch, Servin takes away. Just five hits total in the game for Toronto. Five runs, three walks, and five Ks. The 1-1 called strike, one and two. Yeah, they really haven't had much going on, but like I've said a couple times, Dakota Hudson looked really good. He turned things around after that first inning. He really started to throw that sinker for strikes all over the place. He was a tough, tough pitcher to face. Second inning through sixth inning, and... Good thing for the Blue Jays. They got that grand slam from Dalton Barshow in the first. They lead 5-3. to three. Servin leading off. 1-2 pitch outside. Two balls, two strikes. Vodnik, a 2016 draft pick out of a California high school by the Braves in the 14th round. Blows the fastball by Servin. Out number one. Let's take a look at the St. Louis Bar and Grill out-of-town scoreboard quickly with the Blue Jays up 5-3, one out the bottom of the seventh. San Francisco Giants and Tampa Bay Rays in a back-and-forth game at the Trop. Giants took the early lead, as we told you earlier in the game. Tampa Bay tied it up bottom of the third, a run-scoring double play ball by Yandy Diaz, but then Tyro Estrada homering in the fourth inning for the Giants. 2-1 Gigantes over Rays right now. First pitch strike against George Springer. 0-1. Oh one. one out, bases empty, bottom seven. Blue Jays ahead 5-3. to 0-1. Oh Springer fouls it off, nothing in two. The right-hander Vodnik with five scoreless appearances to start the season. He was one of the handful of guys picked up in a trade to the Braves last year near the deadline. 0-2. Springer fouls back the fastball. Rocky sent then their closer, Pierce Johnson, over to Atlanta. Some young pitchers and some young players coming back the other way. And Vodnik struggled last year in six appearances to an 8-3-1 ERA. Triple zeros right now on his line as he delivers the 0-2. Springer takes it downstairs. Well, he's looked really good to Springer here. He threw a couple of just dotted fastballs, 99-100, down and away in the zone. Then he threw that elevated fastball that Springer was able to foul off, but he's looked really, really nasty here. He's got big separation of velocity on his pitches. 1-2. Slider hit to second. Picked up by the second baseman, Rogers, who will throw to first. Two down. That was actually the fastball. His fastball at 97. The slider averages 84. 
So a whole 13 mile per hour separation in the changeup at 89, eight miles per hour slower than the four seamer. So kind of three different speeds you have to gear up for. Yeah, really, really tough AB right there. If 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 a guy that has the kind of stuff that Vodnik has locates his pitches, there's not much you can do. Guerrero takes strike one, a 99 mile per hour heater. Two out spaces empty. Vladdy's 0 for 3 today. A line out, a strikeout, and a ground out. A 1. Kind of quick pitched there. The slider drops in for strike 2. And that's where you have to take advantage. You have to take advantage of that spinning slider that's left middle middle. And Vlad just let that ball go. Bodnick leaning forward. Comes set. Takes a breath to pitch. Swinging a liner to right down for a base hit. First knock today for Guerrero. Who jogs around first. He'll extend the inning here for Bo Bichette. Such a good approach right there. That fastball left up over the middle at 100 miles an hour. And Vlad just takes it the other way. Good line drive into right field. When he uses that big part of the field and he can go the other way like that, there's, there's no stopping him. What a pretty swing. Guerrero to first after the knock. Talking with El Aris Montero as Bichette swings at the first pitch and grounds it foul just wide of Carlos Fables in the third base coach's box 0-1. Be at the ballpark on Tuesday, April 16th and bring your appetite because it's Looney Dogs Night presented by Schneider's. Make your way to the hot dog headquarters at Schneider's Sports. There's plenty of fun to go around on Tuesday nights at the ballpark. So head to bluejays.com slash looney dogs to purchase your ticket today. Bichette takes the next pitch down and away. One ball, one strike, two outs, 5-3 Blue Jays, runner on first. Bottom of the seventh. Bows one for three. Single to left in the first, came around to score. 1-1. Swing and a miss. Chased after the changeup in the dirt, 1-2. and two. Yeah, that was just Bo Bichette guessing right there. He was guessing fastball. Vodnik just sneaks in that breaking, or sorry, that changeup down in the zone, and Bows kind of looked foolish on it. Vodnik peeks over at first. Comes set. Glove below his belt. The pitch. Low. Went with the changeup again. It's ball two. Vodnik's got medium to long hair. Not as long as Bichette's, but it peeks out the back of his hat. Mustache and a short beard. 2-2. Two -two. Outside ball three. He is really slide-stepping. I'm not sure why, because I don't think Vlad's going anywhere, but... I think it's as much to mess with the hitter. Yeah. He was, he was kind of mixing speeds on Guerrero with nobody on. 3-2, Vladdy takes off. A line drive to right field. Down. Vladdy around second, headed for third. The throw coming in from Tolia in time. Guerrero immediately pointing to the dugout. He hook slid to the right. And thought that he got in there. But Shet with the single regardless. The Rockies are jogging off the field. The Blue Jays, though, still looking right now. Guerrero with his left hand on the third base bag. Slams his right hand into the dirt as the Blue Jays say play on. It's a single. What I'm trying to advance so that'll be a single for Bo Bichette. But Guerrero thrown out trying to go first to third. And that does it for the bottom of the seventh. One left on, two hits for the Blue Jays, no runs. They lead 5-3 to three as we go to the eighth. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball, brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center, streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. The biggest clubs in world soccer clash at the UEFA Champions League. And it's on Sirius XM FC. What a brilliant finish that is for Mavinia. After a thrilling 3-2 win in Paris, Barcelona host PSG in the second leg of the quarterfinals with a spot in the last four on the line. Breaks the dead, but a left foot in right into the back of the net. Barcelona versus PSG Tuesday at 3 Eastern on Sirius XM FC 157 and streaming on the Sirius XM app. Hello, Blue Jay fans. I'm Craig Ballard, host of your daily Locked On Blue Jays podcast. Locked On Blue Jays is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked On Blue Jays brings you the latest Blue Jays news and analysis and breaks down all of the action. Locked On Blue Jays is everything a Blue Jays fan could want all in a 30-minute daily podcast. Download Locked On Blue Jays right now on the SXM app, available with all trials and popular plans or wherever you get your podcasts. 
Search Locked on Blue Jays. While you're listening to this game on Sirius XM, we're talking about the latest odds and prop bets for this and every game on Sports Grid Radio. The under's minus 125. Heavy juice to the under. Every home run hit and every strikeout thrown can change the line. I can't for the life of me figure out how you can favor a team that never wins, ever. If you're looking for sports talk centered around the latest odds and prop bets for games, races, tournaments, or any sporting events, Sports Grid Radio. Sirius XM, Channel 159. Blue Jays fans, after this game, get back to what's really important, your fantasy football team. We're talking about it right now on Fantasy Sports Radio, Channel 87, and the Sirius XM app. Top of the eighth inning at Rogers Center. Blue Jays up 5-3. to three. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. thrown out trying to go first to third on a Bo Bichette single to end the seventh. Here comes Chad Green, new pitcher for the Blue Jays. To start the eighth, his pitch to Michael Tolia, swing and a miss, strike one. Tolia made the outfield assist. Guerrero had a running start because it was 3-2 and two outs when Bichette lined it to right field. But Tolia charging in, got the liner on one hop, threw out Guerrero. 0-1, taken for ball one. And now Tolia trying to make an impact with the bat. Came in. In the fifth inning for Chris Bryant, actually came in defensively in the bottom of the fourth, hit for the first time in the fifth. The 1-1, fouled back into the netting, 1-2. and two. So far today, Tolia 0-for-1 with a strikeout swinging. Switch hitter has batted left the whole time today. I'm Ben Schulman, to my left, Chris LaRue. 5-3 Blue Jays, top of the eighth. Tolia leads off, the 1-2 from Green is hit off to our left into the 200 level seats still one and two and i guess green pitching in the eighth means that jimmy garcia is now closing i guess just for today one two pitch fouled off the way that it appears they've been doing it although chad green has been in the ninth inning the highest leverage situations in games have gone to jimmy garcia However, when the middle of the order came up, this game wasn't very close in kind of the sixth or seventh inning. It was five to one. One, two. Outside, two and two. And lefty, so they went to Tim Meza. So that's allowed them to save Jimmy Garcia for the ninth inning if possible. And in his last game, he looked nasty. Really good. Two scoreless innings, four strikeouts, and six batters faced. Two, two. Line drive to right. Springer coming in. It's a bit of a looper. Springer with a dive. And he made it. He made it the catch full sprawl out in right field one down what a play from jimmy garcia sprinting in making that huge catch that could be a game changing catch game saving catch george springer racing in dove out backhanded got it off to his right the eyes were wide of Chad Green as that play was going on, and then he threw his hands into the air. A great first out defensively for Toronto. Here's Elias Diaz. First pitch. Called strike one. 96 out of the hand of Green. He's a little bit jacked up right now. And the buzz of the crowd just getting a little bit louder after that play from Springer. Blue Jays up 5-3, one out, top of the eighth. The 0-1. A hair outside, one ball, one strike. It's actually really difficult to sprint in like that and dive directly forward just like, like Springer did. It's a lot easier to dive to the left or the right or even back, but diving straight in like that is really difficult. Next pitch fouled off. It hits Servin, who's on his hands and knees right now. I believe it got him in the groin. The two-piece catcher's mask is dangling off his helmet right now. And he's still kind of on his hands and knees as the fellow catcher, Elias Diaz, is trying to help him put his left hand on the back of Brian Servin. And now Jose Ministral, head athletic trainer for the Blue Jays, is out on one knee talking to Servin. Yeah, he is clearly in pain. Still on two knees there, looking down at the ground, hunched over. Sitting up a little bit more now. John Schneider in a crouch, a former catcher as well, going out to talk right now to Brian Servin. Any former catcher knows that feeling, that's for sure. Jose Ministral talking with Servin. 
who hasn't really looked up but is sitting more upright. Now he's starting to look forward. Chad Green, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. in between the mound and the dugout as well, making sure that Servin's okay. John Schneider standing up. He's starting to slowly walk back toward the dugout and Servin on his feet now for Toronto as well. Here comes the applause from the Rogers Center crowd. Chad Green's likely going to need a couple pitches here just with a bit of a layoff. We'll see if he takes them. Servin might want them as well. The catcher who will remain behind the plate. Diaz and Servin talking right now. I can see a smile on both of their faces. Good to see from Servin. They're going to jump right back into it. No warm-up pitches. Green back on the rubber. One out. Base is empty. 5-3 Toronto. Top of the eighth. And the 1-2 pitch to Elias Diaz. Down and away. Ball two. A diving catch to help preserve the lead. And the wave has started in the crowd as the fans are fired up here at Rogers Center in downtown Toronto. 2-2. Two -two. Foul back into the seats. A little bit behind the wave. Still two balls, two strikes. Second time we've seen the wave this series. Wave on back-to-back -back games. Nice. Two-game hit streak for the wave. <laughs> I think it's going backwards this time, actually. 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Two down, first K of the outing for Chad Green. Good pitch from Chad Green, 96 miles an hour. It's good to see the velo just ticking up a, a little bit. With two outs, here comes Nolan Jones, a left-handed hitter who Blue Jays pitching has not solved yet. Two for two, a single, a double, a walk, a run scored. Wave persists as the first pitch goes in. It's called strike one. Busy schedules have finally met their match. Ticket packs. With ticket packs, you get the ultimate flexibility to mix tickets for any games with unlimited exchanges, plus save up to 20% compared to single game tickets. Visit bluejays.com slash ticket packs to get yours today. It is a clockwise wave. I don't know what, what <laughs> constitutes forward and backward for the wave, but it is a clockwise wave. Yesterday it was counterclockwise. Okay. Oh one. Swing and a miss, strike two. You know what I'd like them to see is the wave clockwise stop and then get it going the other <laughs> way or maybe 100 levels of clockwise wave 200 levels of counterclock you're getting wave. too fancy Ben. i am maybe one day two outs base is empty top of the eighth the o2 just outside at 96 and you're right the velocity which has probably been a bit more like 94 and a half for green might be more 95 and a half yeah. right now Is one, two. High, two balls, two strikes. Well, Chad Green is at his best when he's 95, 97, working around the belt because he has that good spin on that fastball, that almost the, the invisible type, type of fastball, and then he mixes in that good hard breaking ball. Two, two. Got him. Strike three. Fastball on the outside edge. Jones goes down, and it's a one, two, three, eighth for Chad Green. Diving catch by George Springer helps, and the Blue Jays will look for some insurance. Up 5-3, to three, headed to the bottom of the eighth. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball, brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center, streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. At Crown Rust Control, protection runs deep because every Crown Rust Control Center is owned by a local family who cares beyond business. Your Crown Rust Control is 100% committed to their product, to you, to their community, which is your community. Protecting you and what matters to you is equally important as protecting your vehicle. Did you know spring's the best time of year to protect your vehicle from rust? For a special spring offer, find your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center at crown.com. Everyone dreams of owning their own personal slice of heaven. Now you can, thanks to Fixed Rate Pizza by Pizza Pizza. Until the end of 2024, lock into an extra-large four-topping pizza at a fixed price of $17.99. No matter how bad food prices get this year, your pizza price stays. So why not say no to surge pricing and yes to Fixed Rate Pizza? Order now from Pizza Pizza. Go to pizzapizza.ca by your side Got a heart so big On this you can rely No mountains too tall 
for the strong booster plan. I am by your side. That was Desjardins Insurance. Playing insurance with a heart so big it shows. Tune in for your auto and home coverage at Desjardins.com slash heart. This is Toronto Blue Jays baseball. Runner going, throw down his second. They got him. On Sportsnet 590 The Fan and the Sportsnet Radio Network. This copyrighted broadcast is presented by Authority of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form in the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership or the Sportsnet Radio Network. Bottom of the eighth, 5-3 Blue Jays over Rockies. New pitcher for Colorado, Jake Bird, the right-hander, takes over. And I believe there's a pitch comm issue before he gets started. Elias Diaz was trying to give him signals. Now home plate umpire Nestor Seha and Diaz will walk out to the mound. Bird, the right-hander, is a 2018 fifth-round pick out of UCLA by Colorado. Was a starter for the Bruins and actually led the Pac-12 in ERA in 16 starts in 2018 at 2-1-8. But immediately they converted him to a reliever, did the Rockies. Started only 10 times from 2018 to 2022 in his minor league career. The long-haired right-hander puts his cap back on with a new pitch comm inside of it and gets ready to face Daniel Vogelback with the Blue Jays leading 5-3. Vogelback, Kevin Biggio, Davis Schneider, 4-5-6 for the Blue Jays. Two up in this bottom of the eighth. Bird's pitch to Vogelback. Outside ball one. Kind of a funky motion. He's got that... Almost sidearm type type delivery at 96, mid-90s fastball with good run on it. You don't really see guys like this every day. The pitch. Lasered in for strike one. Got the long hair, the beard, the sidearm. It's a lot going on. There. I like it. Bird into the set. Glove up near his chin. Brings it down. Back up the pitch. Vogel back with a fly ball to left center. Not super deep. Jones is going to make the call. The left fielder stops and makes the catch off to his left. One out. Here comes Kevin Biggio. Probably the final chance to extend his hit streak to eight games. Tied for a career long with seven with a streak he had in September 2019, his debut season. Biggio today, though, 0 for 3. Fly out, ground out, and strike out. Right on left pitch. Biggio takes strike one. Previously a guy who struggled with the high pitch. Biggio has dominated the middle and top of the zone so far this year. 0-1. Breaking ball lands on the low and outside corner for strike two. I tell you what, as bad as this Colorado Rockies ERA is in the bullpen, they throw out some pretty good arms 0-2 outside one ball and two strikes think they have a lot of guys with really good stuff but haven't seen the consistency Blue Jays did see Jake Bird last year 1-2 Biggio with a liner to center down for a base hit make that a career long hit streak for Kevin Biggio, the single improves it to an eight-game streak. He's aboard with one out in the bottom of the eighth. Yeah, he's seeing the ball really well right now. Just a good fastball down and away. And Kevin just stays with it, drives that ball right back up the middle on a line. He's obviously seeing that ball really, really well right now. I mentioned the Blue Jays saw Bird last year. David Schneider was one of those guys. Bird faced four hitters, retired one, gave up three hits, including an RBI double to Schneider. First pitch. Inside, ball one. All three of the base runners, Kiermaier who singled, Springer who singled off of him, and then Schneider who doubled in one run. All three would eventually come around to score. It was three earned runs for Bird in a third of an inning on September 1st last year. The 1-0. Hard hit, line drive, left field, sinking and down. Biggio up to second. Schneider around first. That's his first hit today, but third time aboard. Two on here as the Blue Jays look to rally and add on some much-needed insurance in the end. Yeah, David Schneider just continues to make good contact 
Whether he gets out or not, he's hitting the ball on a line. Just a good, solid approach right there. Drills that ball into left field on a line. That was a slightly elevated fastball, so interesting to see Schneider hitting it there. That'll be the last move he makes today. Blue Jays likely to defensively substitute in the ninth anyway. Will pinch run Kiermaier for Schneider. Expect Kiermaier to go into center and Varsho to move from center to left in the ninth. So it's Kiermaier on first, Biggio on second. The pitch to Varsho. Breaking ball, backdoors him for strike one. What do you think about a double steal right here? With one out, I mean, I, I think there's some merit to it. They haven't attempted a stolen base all day. 0-1. Swing and a miss. 0-2. I just like to play aggressively. That's all I like to do. And everyone likes stolen bases. <laughs> MLB always says when they're looking for new rules and stuff, they always ask what's the most exciting play. And stolen base always comes back even ahead of the home run. 0-2 pitch. Bounce to the plate. Diaz keeps it in front of him. And that keeps Biggio at second and Kiermaier at first. Ryan McMahon is probably 30 feet off the bag at third base. If Biggio can get one of those good hopping leads, good secondaries, and then kind of just take off. Kevin Kiermaier is staring at Kevin Biggio. At first base. Kiermaier's got almost no hold on him. He's ready to go. But they stay put on the 1-2, which is outside. Two balls, two strikes. Sometimes you really don't want to mess with a guy with two strikes either just because Varsho might get distracted by Biggio trying to take third. Might feel pressure to swing, too, yeah. when a guy ticks off. Yep. 2-2. Two -two. Called outside. Boy, did that look like a good pitch. But it's called a ball, full count. Yeah, I, probably a gift for Dalton Varsho there. I guess you want to say it's a good take because it wasn't called a strike, but clearly that ball was in that strike box. I think it's a good take because that's just his, like, biggest out pitch, you know, and even if it's called a strike, probably nothing he can do with it. 3-2, swing and a miss. Over top of a slider on the inside part of the plate. Now two down, still two on. Here's IKF. Just a really good slider from Bird. Started middle, broke down and in. Dalton Varsho just swings right over it. A little bit out in front, just a hair. First and second, Biggio on second, Kiermaier on first. Right-handed hitting Isaiah kiner falefa batting 308 this year. The pitch. In there, strike one. 5-3 Blue Jays, bottom of the eighth. I'm Ben Schulman alongside Chris LaRue. IKF with a 462 slugging percentage to start the year. Three doubles and a homer in 14 games. A one. Fouled off to the right side, off the end of the battle roller into the first base dugout. Career slugging percentage by IKF, by the way. Not quite 462, but 348. So he is hitting... Well above average in terms of his power so far. 0-2, oh, Biggio and Kiermaier take off. Swing and a looper down the right field line. Slicing into the seats. 10, 15 feet away from a base hit there for IKF. Interesting to see the Blue Jays running there with two down, although it's an 0-2 count. Yeah. They're just trying to be aggressive. They're trying to get something going. Maybe they thought that Bird would try to bury a slider there, so it would be an easy just moving up two bases there. 0-2, oh, they don't go this time, and IKF fights off another one. And I mean, Kiermaier's so fast. If you hit a single near a gap, like not past the outfielders but even into one, he could potentially score from first on a running start. Especially with two outs, because you're being more aggressive as a third base coach. You're sending him, taking a chance. Turning to throw to second, Biggio dives back. No tag applied by Rodgers. He'll flip it back to the pitcher, Bird. Blue Jays haven't scored since the first inning. They lead right now, 5-3. Two strikes, two outs, two on the pitch. High chopper to short. Backhanded by Tovar. He'll whiz it over to first and beat Connor Falefa to end the inning. Two hits, but both stranded, and the Blue Jays take a two-run advantage to the ninth. Jimmy Garcia coming in to a 5-3 game in favor of Toronto. 
looking for a save. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball, brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center, streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Netflix is a joke radio brings you exclusive comedy specials and stand up from Netflix's massive library from the world's biggest comedians. He's Mick Jagger. I pitched him a joke and he went, not funny. We give you unparalleled access to Netflix's top premieres. And join Tom Papa and Fortune Feimster every day for interviews with the biggest names in comedy. <laughs> Netflix is a joke radio channel 93. Search comedy on the all new SiriusXM app. Are you regretting eating that gas station hot dog? Yeah, we know. We've been there too. This is a message for baseball fans like you. Did you know that you get a channel that's talking baseball 24-7 as part of your Sirius XM subscription? What? Our lineup includes shows hosted by former big leaguers and executives. Plus, you'll hear from 17 managers each week. MLB Network Radio is on Sirius XM Channel 89. Or just search MLB Network Radio on the SXM app. Sirius XM Sports. We're more than just a game. This is Bob Kendrick, president of the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum and host of the Sirius XM original podcast, Black Diamonds. Hear stories about the legends of the Negro Leagues and conversations with the all-time greats they've influenced, like five-time World Series champion Derek Jeter. I don't care what race you are. You need to know your past. This is U.S. history. It's not just baseball history. Hear over 70 episodes of the award-winning Black Diamonds podcast, available now on the SiriusXM app or wherever you get your podcasts. Hi, this is Alexa. Did you know you can listen to this game on devices with Amazon Alexa? Download the Sirius XM app. Then tell me to play the Blue Jays on Sirius XM. Sportsnet Radio Network. Welcome to the Timbermark Broadcast Booth. I'm Ben Shulman. To my left, Chris LaRouche. Show Ali. I'll show here our host today. He'll host Blue Jays Talk with Nick Ashbourne after the game. Andrew Adams and Tom Young, our technical directors. Nick Blackmore, our producer today. Top of the ninth inning, 5-3 Toronto. Jimmy Garcia coming in in a save opportunity. He'll get Brendan Rodgers to start the ninth. Righty's first pitch. Swing and a miss, strike one. 97 middle in to start the inning. And Jimmy Garcia was so dominant in his last game against Seattle. Two innings, four Ks, no walks, no hits. That fastball was up to 100 with really good run. And you see right there, fastball that started down the middle and broke back in at 97. He's been really, really good lately. 0-1. Called strike two, 98 with the fastball. We can just hear that pop all the way from the Timbermark broadcast booth. He's had huge juice on the fastball since early in the spring. 0-2 pitch. High and outside, ball one. By the way, defensive changes for the Blue Jays after Kevin Kiermeyer pinch ran for David Schneider. Kiermeyer into center, and Dalton Varsha, the starting center fielder, has moved into left where Schneider started today. The one two. Swing and a miss. 98 center cut, and Rodgers could do nothing about it. One down. Yeah, Rodgers obviously had off speed in the back of his mind. That good fastball was middle, middle, but good run, good velo. Rodgers swings right through it. So one out, here's El Aris Montero. Eight hitter in the lineup today, one for three with a single. The pitch, swing and a miss, behind 98, strike one. It's almost like his ball just moves more and more every single every single outing. That was absolutely disgusting right there. Garcia got off to a tough start last season. He looked determined this year to get off to a much better start. Oh, one outside, one ball, one strike. And then you mix in that good slider. Now Montero's thinking that he has the slider, then you just zip in that fastball on the inside part of the plate. Montero has no chance. First save opportunity of the season for Jimmy Garcia. 5-3 Blue Jays, the 1-1, is lifted down the right field line, slicing foul just beyond the first base dugout into the seats, 1-2. and two. And if I'm Jimmy here, I'm just going heater up. Good luck. Struck out Rodgers on a fastball to start this inning. Montero asks for time, adjusts his white batting gloves. He's back in the box, lays his bat down flat on the plate and brings it up above his right shoulder. Garcia kicks and delivers. 
Fouled off. Fastball at 100, and Montero somehow tipped it to stay alive. Yeah, Servant's, Servant's target was elevated. It was above the belt there, and Garcia actually still threw a pretty well-located fastball on the outside part of the plate. Montero couldn't catch up. Garcia with the glove at his belt is in the set. 1-2 again. Swing and a miss. This time he elevates the heater. Montero waves at it. There are two down. Yeah, when you have two strikes on somebody like that and you throw 100 miles an hour, you throw that fastball where they can't hit it, or at the very worst, they'll just pop it up. And that's what Jimmy Garcia did right there. He threw that fastball almost at the letters, and Montero swings right through it. It looks so good coming in, and then you just can't catch up. Here's Brenton Doyle. Rockies down to their final out. 5-3 Blue Jays, top of the ninth. The right-on-right -right pitch. Hit foul 0-1. Toronto scored five in the first inning of this game. Springer and Bichette with hits before Vogelback and Schneider walked to force in a run. And then Dalton Varsho with a grand slam. The 0-1. Swing and a miss, strike two. It was Brenton Doyle who scored the lone run off of Yariel Rodriguez in his debut. Three and two-thirds. Doyle with a solo homer in the third. And then a two-run single by Brendan Rodgers in the sixth. Made it a close one. Now the Blue Jays up five to three. Top of the ninth. Two strikes. Two outs. Bases empty. 31,000 on their feet. The 0-2. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Garcia strikes out the side. Picks up the save. And the Blue Jays even the series. 5-3, Toronto wins at home over Colorado. That inning right there was so impressive. Jimmy Garcia continues to dominate this season, throwing 98 to 100 up in the zone. Wow. Jimmy Garcia and Chad Green combined to strike out the last five hitters that the Blue Jays' bullpen faced. Really good day for Mesa Green Garcia, 7, 8, 9, and Dalton Varsho homers for the second straight day as well. We will talk about all that and more on the other side after this Blue Jays 5-3 win, and then we'll send you off to Blue Jays talk. The Blue Jays improved to 7 and 8, Rockies to 4 and 11. The series is tied at once, setting up a rubber match tomorrow. Stick around. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball, brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center, streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. At Crown Rust Control Center, protection runs deep because every Crown Rust Control Center is owned by a local family who cares beyond business. Your Crown Rust Control Center is 100% committed to their product, to you, to their community, which is your community. Protecting you and what matters to you is equally important as protecting your vehicle. Did you know spring's the best time of year to protect your vehicle from rust? For a special spring offer, find your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center at crown.com. The Blue Jays are inviting you to work from Dome. Put it in your calendar. 307 Weekday starts this season. You can work from Dome with friends or coworkers at Rogers Center. It's a game changer. Make the ballpark your office for the afternoon. Work from Dome, 307 weekday starts. Let's touch base. Check out ticket options on bluejays.com slash work from dome. Everyone dreams of owning their own personal slice of heaven. Now you can, thanks to Fixed Rate Pizza by Pizza Pizza. Until the end of 2024, lock into an extra-large four-topping pizza at a fixed price of $17.99. No matter how bad food prices get this year, your pizza price stays. So why not say no to surge pricing and yes to fixed-rate pizza? Order now from Pizza Pizza. Go to pizzapizza.ca. Hey, this is Isaiah Kiner-Falefa. You're listening to Toronto Blue Jays Baseball on the Sportsnet Radio Network. Now, 
The Blue Jays take game two of the series. A 5-3 win over the Colorado Rockies sets up a rubber match tomorrow here at Rogers Center. Thanks so much for sticking around, and we'll get you over to Blue Jays Talk in just a moment where you can already get your text in at 590-590 before you get your calls in to Show Ali and Nick Ashbourne. I'm Ben Shulman alongside Chris LaRue. Show Ali, our host today, Nick Blackmore, our producer, Andrew Adams and Tom Young, our technical directors. Today, Chris, was the debut, the Major League debut, for Yariel Rodriguez, Cuban-born right-hander who signed with the Blue Jays this offseason on a five-year, $32 million deal. And in three and two-thirds innings, he really displayed why he was so sought after. Rodriguez mixed his pitches and came up with six strikeouts while only allowing one run. What did you think of him? Yeah, I mean, I think we all forget that this is his major league debut just because he signed for so much money there's been so much hype with Yariel Rodriguez he is going out there with the nerves he's going out with, out there with the excitement that everybody experiences during their major league debut and he looked incredible he looked like he he looked like he has been out there I don't want to say forever because there were some hiccups but he, he looked like he was comfortable out there which was the main thing he had that good the good hard fastball a little bit of cut a little bit of run sometimes he had the good slider i think the biggest thing was with him is just when he falls behind guys that's fine you everybody falls behind but you have to you have to pitch backwards in the big leagues you have to pitch backwards you have to flip in a change up or a split finger 2-0 you have to flip in that slider 2-0 you can't just groove a fastball and he'll learn that these are just growing pains but he looked incredible tonight for a guy that that has never set foot on a major league mound or or a mound in the u.s or canada that was that was pretty incredible yariel rodriguez again three and two thirds four hits one earned run one walk six strikeouts on the other side dakota hudson got the start and the rockies this year have had problems with their starters giving up runs early 10 times in the previous 14 games and the blue jays made it 11 and 15 after springer singled bachette singled and vogelback walked Davis Schneider walked to make it one nothing. That brought Dalton Varsho to the plate and brings up our play of the game. Here it is. The 1-0. Swing and a high fly ball. Way back in right. It's gone. Grand slam. Dalton Varsho. 5 nothing. Blue Jays in the first. The second grand slam in the career of Dalton Varsho. A rocket to right field, and Toronto's blown it open in the first. It's 5 nothing. In Dalton Varsho's last three games, he's 4 for 12 with five RBIs. He's starting to come around. He's starting to see the ball better. Yes, that was a cookie that he hit out of the park today, but he sh- that th- those are those are the kind of things that he needs to do when he's going right. You're supposed to hit those balls out of the park, and and I think that the biggest thing for him is using the big part of the field, not swinging at that fastball up around the hands, not swinging at that changeup down and away pitches that he can't hit. Just wait for your pitch, and that's what he did today. He got ahead in the count, and he waited for that. Dakota Hudson gave him a cookie. That was a 91-mile-an-hour fastball, middle, middle, and he just crushed it to right field. But can we take a moment to acknowledge Tim Meza, Chad Green, Jimmy Garcia? Absolutely. Tim Meza looked like old Tim Meza. We were all waiting for this. We saw him in spring training. He was a little shaky. We saw him early on in the season. He was a little shaky, a lot shaky. And today he looked like it was July of last year. Which is, which is very, very encouraging. I hope he continues that trend. His fastball, I saw a couple 93s in there, and I know that he can get up to 95, 96. But 93 is encouraging because in spring training and early on in the season, he was 89, 91, somewhere around there. That's not going to cut it. And then Chad Green was, was great today. And then Jimmy Garcia. You can't say enough about Jimmy Garcia. He's going to get paid at some point in his career. He, when you throw 100 with sink, like, good luck. Good luck, and he showed that today. Blue Jays were up 5-3 going to the seventh inning. Top of the order was up. That's when they threw out Meza, who set down 1-2-3 in order, struck out one. Then it was Green, who set down 4-5-6 in order. Diving catch, by the way, by George Springer, which shouldn't be forgotten in the eighth inning before back-to-back strikeouts by Chad Green. And Garcia said, Green, you struck out two in the eighth. Well, I'll strike out all three in the ninth. (laughs) He picks up his first save of the season. 
Bowden Francis with the win today to go to one and two. He gets the win in relief. Dakota Hudson moves to 0-3 with the loss. Blue Jays scored five runs on nine hits. No errors left six on for Colorado. Three runs on seven hits. No errors. Six left on as well. This game started at 307, went just over two and a half hours in front of 31 and a half thousand indoor at Rogers Center. And with the win, the Blue Jays go to seven and eight. The Rockies move to four and eleven, and it sets up a rubber match at Rogers Center tomorrow. Who else would the Blue Jays want on the mound for that? But the man they're throwing out there, Jose Barrios against Kyle Freeland. It's a matchup of the opening day starters for these two teams. The right-hander Barrios against the left-hander Bremen or Freeland, pardon me, and that will start at 1 p.m. Eastern. Really appreciate you tuning in on this Saturday afternoon. For Andrew Adams and Tom Young, our technical directors, Show Ali, our in-game host, Nick Blackmore, our producer, and my partner, Chris LaRue. I'm Ben Schulman. Hope you had a good afternoon, and we'll see you tomorrow at 1. Stick around, though. Get your calls in. Jay's Talk with Show and Nick starts right now. Well, Nick, this is closer to what we expected out of a Jays-Rockies matchup, which is to say a win for the Blue Jays, 5-3, the final score in favor of the home side. Yes, still somewhat of a mixed bag, especially when it comes to the offense, but a filthy outing from Jimmy Garcia to wrap up this game. Yariel Rodriguez looked pretty good, all things considered, in his first ever Major League start. And uh, you will take a win to even the series at one game apiece pretty much any day of the week, I'd say. Yeah, I think this game went approximately to plan for the Blue Jays. Yeah, you don't normally want all your runs to come in one inning and basically on one swing. But Yariel Rodriguez had the kind of MLB debut they were hoping for. Maybe if you really want to nitpick, he could have gone deeper. But realistically, he gave them a lot. He showed the quality of his fastball, his slider. He looked dynamic. And then they rolled out the bullpen as planned. You saw Francis, and then you saw those big dogs at the end of the bullpen. And each and every one of them, even Meza, who's dealing with the velocity drop there, was incredibly effective. That is Nick Ashmore, and I'm Show Ali. You're listening to Jay's Talk on the Sportsnet Radio Network. We're also streaming live on sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet app. Jay's 5-3 winners today at the Rogers Center. Give us a call, 416-870-0590, 590 star 590 on your cellular device. You can text us as well if you like, uh, 590-590. Name and location, that is the people's text line. And it is always open. All right. What do you think? What do you want to do first? Yariel Rodriguez or continue chatting about the bullpen, Nick? A dealer's choice. I'll leave it up to you. I think you got to go with Yariel Rodriguez right. because, right, you know, it's the novel factor, right? <laughs> like these bullpen guys, we've seen them before. We're going to see them again. Yariel Rodriguez was something new, and he was really impressive. There were some moments where he kind of lost the hand on his command a little bit. We have to keep the context in mind that it was the Colorado Rockies offense. Like, there are some pitches he left over the plate, and they swung right through it. A couple strikeouts like that. And so against a more difficult offense, he might have had a more difficult outing. But the velocity was great. The slider had great movement on it. He looked like the pitcher he'd been advertised as being. And there's still question marks about command about the other pitches in his repertoire for sure he not everything has been settled by single outing but the blue sure. jays have to be delighted by what they've seen today so we knew he was working with that 70 pitch count limit and i had said to you in the pregame show that if if you get if you're taking those 70 pitches through about four innings and you get let's say three earned runs or less from someone who is effectively your number five starter. And and especially if it gets you through those four innings, knowing what 70 pitches is usually good for these days, he like he just looked comfortable. And I and I know that's not hard hitting analysis, but this it's just that this is something we harp on a lot. Like the when you're blending how you how you internalize and interpret analytics and numbers while also trying to blend that with what you're seeing with your actual eyeballs. And it just, he never really looked like the moment was too big for him. He had some attitude when he was walking off the mound. Like he was kind of skipping off the mound when he would get a big strikeout or kind of slapping his fist into his glove. And it's, it's just that I think sometimes that kind of stuff can supplement like the, the things that I like to see from baseball savant or the radar gun or whatever. And 
for a guy who has never pitched in the majors before, really only made his only two starts on North American soil coming in uh, in Buffalo these last couple of weeks, he did not look really all that phased by anything. Like he was excited for the really positive stuff, but when there were base runners on, for example, it's not like he was he was letting that get to him either, which I think beyond what you got out of his fastball and the slider looked pretty good as well. If had a pretty steady diet of sliders early in the first inning, which uh, worked to his great effect, but beyond the usage of the actual pitches we can get to in a sec, he, he just looked like the moment never got too big for him, which I always feel like when you see a guy going on the mound for the very first time ever, that's kind of what I look for sometimes. Well, it's sort of a reminder that every MLB debut is not created equal, right? Like, this is not a 21-year-old kid who has never even pitched above double-A, who's some kind of phenom, and you bring him up because he's been your top prospect for a number of years. Like, this is a person who has experience pitching at the pro level in Cuba, in turn in Japan like in his own way he is kind of a veteran yeah. of professional baseball even if he isn't a veteran of the major leagues and I think we saw that today we saw someone who had MLB ready stuff and as you mentioned was just seemed relatively in control of the moment the majority of the time and that's something that you get with these international free agents where they are rookies but at the same time they are pros and they know what they're doing and he definitely looked like someone who knew what he was doing so give us a call, 416-870-0590, 590 star 590 on your cell, 590-590 is the text line, people's text line, always open, and I see here a text, uh, Nick, from Brian in Toronto, he says, very impressive outing by Rodriguez, they got him out at the right time, looking forward to seeing him in his next start against the Padres, and yeah, I think the Padres certainly will provide you, and I know they had a bad year last year by their lofty standards, but they are going to provide you a much tougher challenge, more than likely, especially because that game is going to be in San Diego and not here in Toronto. So, you will. I am looking forward, like Brian, to seeing what he's got. But, I mean, you look at the way he used a lot of his pitches. I mean, like I said earlier, he fed a lot of the sliders to the batters very early on. He got the fastball up to 94, 95 miles an hour early in the game. Uh, I, again, I love the fight I saw from him in the second inning. Like, he allows the stand-up double to Chris Bryant before he exited the game. He walks another batter. He gets out of the jam of his own doing, which included a pop-up and a strikeout in that same inning. The third inning, so Brenton Doyle crushes a slider that he left over the middle of the plate. And and that was not one of those cheap home runs. He obliterated that baseball. It was never in doubt. No, 420 feet from Brenton Doyle. It just that slider didn't move as much as some of the other sliders he was throwing in the first inning. But I thought it was interesting because after the home run, he wasn't nibbling. He went right after the next couple of batters. Like Doyle, I think, was the nine batter today. So uh, when, when it turns back over to Charlie Blackman, he, I think his fastball got up to like 98 miles an hour on the, on the very next batter to Blackman. And... He threw, a, he threw a couple fewer sliders in the immediacy following the Doyle home run, but he put a kind of a brief pause in the slider throwing. But he did use the slider to get over guys and to get a lot of strikeouts by the end of it. And I, got, I think he finished with six strikeouts. It's, i got to say, very impressive from Yariel Rodriguez. And, again, to Brian's point, when you get, you know, when it's like Xander Bogarts and Fernando Tatis Jr. and Haseon Kim being the guys batting against you, just to name a few guys, especially Tatis, then I'm, I'm curious to see what the approach will be because those are guys who can go out there and hunt fastballs to a certain extent, but I, I was very impressed by what we got today. Yeah, it will be a new challenge in his next start. There's not a lot of guys he faced today that would make the Padres lineup, and I'm not even saying that to suggest the Padres have one of the truly elite lineups in the majors. That's just the situation. The big test for him, in my view, is going to be going up against elite left-handed hitters at this level because today he threw, uh, I think it was 57 of his 68 pitches were either the fastball or a slider. So that's really a profile for how to go after same-handed hitters and have the ball break away from them. When you're facing a left-hander, and you have the ball break into them, that's a less effective strategy a lot of times. So he's probably going to have to lean more on the curveball and on the splitter. And we just didn't see a lot of that today. It doesn't mean he doesn't have it. doesn't mean it's not going to be effective. We know those pitches are a little bit secondary. But it's not that hard to have a big fastball and slider. Tons of guys do it. There's guys in bullpens all over the majors that have the big fastball and slider. I want to see him open up the playbook a little bit more in his next start. Let's go back to the text line, 590-590, name and location. You can still give us a call. We're here until the bottom of the hour, the bottom of the next hour, I should say. But on the, on the text line, 590-590, a lot of uh, asks about 
the bullpen. And I, I definitely, and certainly a lot of questions about Jimmy Garcia's role, uh, Chad Green's outing, Tim Meza, who I, I thought had a great bounce back outing, something you and I talked about in the pregame, was what we haven't gotten from Tim Meza. So nice to see that he bounced back. We'll chat about that. But one thing we also talked about in the pregame show, Nick, was Bowden Francis and what Bowden Francis would look like if he were to come out as the, the quote-unquote long man today. So after Yari Rodriguez departed this game, he lasted three and two-thirds. He allowed the one earned run, four hits, two walks, six strikeouts. Bowden Francis came in for two and a third. So he allowed three hits, two runs, both of which were earned. He issued two walks and got three punch outs as well. Early in Bowden Francis' outing, I thought he looked good. And it made me think about something John Schneider had said earlier today to the media, which was as a reliever and not a starter, some of the, the pitches from Bowden Francis have just looked crisper, I believe is the word Schneider used. And that is true. He runs into the trouble in the sixth inning, which was his second inning of relief. Uh, and two, two of those runs come into score. But that, that did make it essentially a whole new ball game. It's nice to see him battle back, but I guess it does underline the point that for Francis, it, it kind of still is a work in progress to a certain extent. Yeah, I mean, this is a guy who last year in 36.1 innings as a reliever had a 173 ERA. Now, can you expect him to do something like that over a long period of time? I don't know. I don't think so, realistically. Yeah. But the fact he did that at all goes to show that there's proof of concept for him as this multi-inning type of reliever, which is probably going to be his role with the Blue Jays for an extended period of time. It doesn't mean we'll never see him start again, but you know, if Yariel Rodriguez is as impressive as today and he keeps building on it, it'd be pretty difficult to unseat him. Francis is a guy who's maybe, yeah, he's more unseating the Espinos and the yeah, Whites yeah, of the world, right. being a better version of that. And you're right, he did look very strong early, and he, he faded a little bit. The velo came down a bit through his outing, and he is someone who turning over the lineup is tough because he's got the the big ish fastball and the really slow curveball and I think if guys see that curveball more than once that can be something they're able to adjust to that big velo gap so I think he's in the right spot he's doing what he needs to be doing and what his best role for the Blue Jays probably is going to be and, and it's funny right because when you look back to 2023 Nick I feel like we also got to see that being Francis's best spot last year right because he was a he was very effective in these in the long roll spots last year and it's true he was used a lot last year especially towards the end of the year when the Blue Jays were either down by a lot or up by a lot so this year maybe he can be used in slightly higher leverage which I think he has earned even if you include the entirety of his outings from 2023 as well but I uh it's it is funny that the, the script has changed so much for Francis in such a short period of time, but it does make me think, and again, one start from Yariel Rodriguez is not going to be the be-all, end-all. You're not going like, to end the conversation on him, like you said, but it is encouraging that if maybe if Kind of like the conversation we were having about Kevin Gosman early in the year, like, oh, wait, you pitch Mitch, uh, pair Mitch White with Gosman if Gosman's not ready to go super deep into games. Maybe you can do that with the Ariel Rodriguez if he's not ready to get, you know, if he's only going to go, if they're going to give him 80 pitches or 85 pitches next time out, and that only taxes him through five and a third, let's call it. You could still throw out Francis because he's kind of paired right now with the, the on days, off days with, with, with Y-Rod. I'm going to make that a thing. Y-Rod. Y-Rod. Yeah, I mean, today, if you think of what happened in this game, they combined to be one effective back of the rotation type of starter. Like those two guys, Wyrod and uh, Bowden, uh, they gave you, you don't six. Like it? You know, like Wyrod? I'll take some time to warm up to it. Uh, no, but they gave you six innings of three run ball. Like that's what you would want from a fourth, fifth type of starter. Just today you got it from two people. And I don't think you're going to see that type of piggy bank backing as, uh, as, they uh, get a little bit more length on Rodriguez here, but it worked for today, and he might not be able to push super deep on his next outing, and guys who are more in that middle relief area like Francis and Richards could be the ones to step up. 416-870-0590, one triple eight triple six zero five ninety star 590 in your on your cellular device, 590-590, name and location. That's the people's text line, and it is always open. Let's go to the phones. Adam in Scarborough joining us here on Jay's Talk. Adam, what's on your mind? So I cannot believe. Hang on, sorry. Oh, wow. That was a quick, that was a very, that might be the quickest phone call we have ever taken. 
I think, on, on JSTOG. <laughs> Adam, if you okay. want to call back, you are certainly more than welcome to. It's great to be a part of history Maybe, here on yeah, JSTOG. Yeah, well, you're welcome to it, Nick. Okay. Well, still, hey, still some time to give us a phone call. 416-870-0590. one 590 star 590 on your cell. I'll just go back to the, the text line, 590-590, name and location. We kind of left off talking about Baton Francis. Uh, let's talk about the rest of the bullpen because Tim Meza, Chad Green, Jimmy Garcia came in and uh, like Ben mentioned in his wrap-up, Tim Meza went one, two, three in the order. Chad Green went four, five, six in the order, and Jimmy Garcia went seven, eight, nine in the order, and absolutely blew those guys away. Filthy stuff from Jimmy Garcia. A lot of texts about Jimmy Garcia. Nick, I'm just going to read you a couple of them. All right. So Fred in Alberta, the way Jimmy Garcia is pitching, Romano's closer job in jeopardy. Chris B in Regina, I think they should think about moving Jimmy to closer. Romano set up Swanson in the seventh bullpen has a chance to be a scary weapon for the Jays. A Steph in Quebec City. Never really had confidence in Romano as a closer. You know what? I do remember Steph's text over the last couple of years, and so I, I give you credit for being very consistent, Steph. Uh, Steph says, why not continue with Garcia and see what he can give? Romano and Meza as set up. What do you guys think? Jimmy Garcia with six and two-thirds, pitched with 0.45 whip, 11 strikeouts. And Ryan from North Bay, what are the chances that Garcia replaces either Swanson or Romano sometime this season? and becomes the best or second best reliever. And again, that's from Ryan in North Bay. So a lot of texts, uh, to say the least. I only read like half of them. There's, there's a lot more about Jimmy Garcia and what his role could be, especially knowing that Swanson and Romano are probably, what, two days or three days at max from returning to this ball club. Yeah, and I understand the enthusiasm. Like, this guy just came out, and he averaged 98 on his fastball today. I think he threw on a 99.5. Like, he really was blowing guys away. And, again, it was the bottom of the lineup. There's a reason those guys are down there. But he was incredibly impressive. And I think the way I would think about it is that it's not necessarily about him taking the closer role. Like, maybe he is in for a better season than Swanson. Sure. Maybe he could be, quote-unquote, the best reliever in the Blue Jays' bullpen, but the way that would look would probably be them using him against the middle of order late in games or a little bit earlier in crucial situations with guys on base. I, I think about him as that quintessential fireman-type role if he's really going, which he certainly seems to be. You know, Jordan Romano is interesting. There's a lot of doubt surrounding him for someone with as good a track record as yeah. he has. The reality is... Over the last couple of years, like he's been a top 10, 15 type of reliever in the big. So I don't think the Blue Jays are looking to remove him from his current role. But if Garcia can be as good as Romano has been or be their best reliever, that's a massive development for them. I think the best case scenario for Jimmy is he can be used to alleviate stress on Jordan Romano. Because I think one of the things we've seen from Romano, Nick, in the last couple of years was... Romano almost gets overused to his own detriment. And then, uh, obviously, to his own detriment means to the ball club's detriment. And he can get a little wild sometimes. And some, some, most pitchers, I would say, do, even the best closers. But I think one of the things that would help Romano is just if you don't have to pitch him like three out of four days or two out of three days in every series, right? Like, don't get me wrong. He's your closer. You should be able to lean on him. You want to be able to do that. And he's been doing it pretty effectively. But, if you do have someone who you can go to if you just want to get a gas can in there and give Romano a bit of a, a bit of a breather, then there's, a, there's no reason that's going to be a bad thing at the very least, right? No, and I think back to the 2022 season where Romano's role kept creeping up and he was doing the four-out games yeah, and then yeah, he was yeah. doing the five-out games. And that's not because that's what you want out of your closer or out of him and he's a really good pitcher and he rose to that challenge and he deserves credit for that. But the type of bullpen they're putting together this year when everyone's healthy, like you really, he really is going to be three outs. And as you mentioned, maybe you don't have to go three times in four days with him if the rest of the guys, and guys like Chad Green and Swanson if he's healthy as well. But Garcia certainly looks like the guy who might be a half a cut above these other ones if his velocity bump holds up. 416-870-0590, one 590 star 590 on your cell. Adam is calling back. Adam is back from Scarborough. Adam, what's All on right. your mind? Yeah, hi. So they've spent millions and millions and millions of dollars fixing up the Rogers Center, and somehow they didn't think of the broadcaster, so they can't see the whole field. It was ridiculous having to guess whether Schneider made the catch or not. 
<laughs> oh, yes, that's right. Earlier in the game, Adam, I appreciate the call. Thanks for calling in, man. So, okay, so I can explain what we're seeing here in the broadcast booth. So I'm, I basically was sitting right between Ben and Chris, in the middle of the broadcast booth. Ben's to my right, Chris is to my left. And we're, like, the fan booth is basically right behind home plate, a little to the left behind home plate uh, on the 300 level. And where you're sitting, where you can see the only parts of the field you can't see from here, essentially, are the very teeny tiny corners of the outfield. So you can kind of see Nick on the left field, along the left field line, or the, pardon me, the third base line leading into left field where the, the bullpen is, the Blue Jays bullpen. The, I guess the, the section of like the kind of trapezoid shape of the the seats out there along the third base line does somewhat the way it extends up to the foul pole it does block like i don't know what do you think that is like 30 feet in terms of from the turf to the top of the the seats i would guess you're right? asking so. me to estimate square footage from <laughs> hundreds of feet away i don't know i think to get in the weeds a little bit with this but not too much the way that the seats are angled towards the plate now is going to be much better for the people who are literally sitting there, but it does yeah. obstruct a little bit because it used to be there's more foul territory and empty space that the broadcast can maybe see to, but then the people sitting in those seats would be craning their necks to look at home plate, and now they're not. So there are pluses and minuses to every alignment, I think. Yeah, it's, it's only really a problem in left. In right field, It's a, you, you're kind of obscured from the very corner, but for the most part, you can see all of the foul territory in right. It's just in left. The the track is a little obscured around there. But it, it did make Ben's job a little difficult. But, uh, hey. It, there are also monitors in the booth that in case for people at home. That does help. That the does plays help. are being seen. Uh, we talked about Jimmy Garcia, and I wanted to give a little bit of uh, some flowers. I know that maybe is an overused phrase, Nick, but I wanted to give some flowers to, to Mesa because – Mesa's had a, a pretty tough start to this season. And again, you know, I like to talk about the circle of trust. And Jimmy Garcia is basically the bullseye of the circle of trust right now. Tim Mesa, again, maybe he's not back there yet, but he's a guy who has been in the circle of trust for many years. He's, I think he's either the longest tenured Blue Jay or he's maybe tied to be the longest tenured Blue Jay with Danny Jansen, but he's a Blue Jays draft pick in 2013. So he's been on the team for a long time and a very tidy outing for him. He gets a pair of ground outs and a strikeout and it's been a tough start that maybe the fastball velo wasn't still not quite where it is, but you're not going to argue too much with the results, especially when he came in against the top of the order. Yeah, and one thing that's been interesting with Mesa this year is because he's lost velocity, he's turned to the slider more, and I don't think that's his game. I think his game is about really pounding that sinker over and over again, even if it's not as hard as maybe it's been in previous years, and that's what he did today. He had nine pitches, and eight of them were sinkers. He just put sinker after sinker after sinker in the zone, and the movement on that pitch was enough to make it difficult for there to be hard contact, and so... Maybe today was a little bit more about a confidence-boosting step as opposed to him suddenly gaining greater stuff or kind of returning to the level of 2023. But it went to show that even though his sinker might be slightly diminished, it does not mean that he has to abandon that pitch or have a different plan of attack to get guys out. I just I can't wait to see him. And again, it was a relatively high leverage situation for Mesa, which I think shows two things. One, he is rounding back into form, and two, they're they're clearly like if the if you're asking like John Schneider or Pete Walker what his circle of trust looks like. Tim Mays is probably in the center of that circle of trust because you don't throw out, and again, I think I've said this to you before, but I think I've, I've always been a proponent of you don't necessarily need to need, need your closer for the end of the game. You should use your best reliever against the, the biggest threat, and if you're having, as, as far as it goes for the Rockies, you're, the top guys coming up, you, you know, you, you should you should at least be willing to throw out your best relievers against those guys in that situation, and Mesa acquitted himself pretty well, I thought, so that's definitely good to see. Chad Green as well. I, I gotta say, Chad Green, two strikeouts in that end for him in the eighth, but he was also aided by a phenomenal diving grab from George Springer. Like full, I'm not taking anything away from Chad Green's outing, but full extension leaves his feet, snatches that ball out of the air. Job by George Springer, phenomenal stuff. The bat may have been a little lethargic at times, but the, that grab was just filthy. 
Man, and if that ball gets past him, you're talking about a triple at minimum. Right. Like you might start to think about inside. I don't think it's inside the park home run quite, but sometimes when you see inside the park home runs, it's because someone has attempted yeah. a catch of that nature and the ball's gotten right by them. According to StatCast, they estimated the expected batting average on that was 920. Wow. So there's a 92% chance that that's normally going to fall for a hit. Uh, but George Springer said not today. And sometimes he can be you could argue overly aggressive on sure. those type of plays. Like he, sure. he likes to make plays that look like that. And, and that's fair. That normally helps the team, but there are times when it goes wrong. But on this occasion, it was a huge out to just keep that back end of the bullpen rolling, kind of prevent the Rockies from mounting any kind of late game threat. That's Nick Ashbourne. I'm Show Ali. Let's take a very quick break here, Nick. And when we come back, still some time to give us a call. 416-870-0590. triple eight triple six zero five ninety star 590 on your cell. If you have more questions, I don't know, about the radio booth sight lines or if you want to talk about the game itself, you are certainly welcome to call in. Uh, 590, 590, name and location. That is the People's Text Line, and it is always open. Blue Jays Talk continues after this on the Sportsnet Radio Network. Timber Mart is Canada's building center, a solid neighbor to call upon when you've got a job to do. Your dependable home improvement store that offers the added value of air miles, reward miles with every purchase of $15 or more. Visit TimberMart.ca. At Crown Rust Control, protection runs deep because every Crown Rust Control center is owned by a local family who cares beyond business. Your Crown Rust Control is 100% committed to their product, to you, to their community, which is your community. Protecting you and what matters to you is equally important as protecting your vehicle. Did you know spring's the best time of year to protect your vehicle from rust? For a special spring offer, find your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center at crown.com. If you're looking for a fun day, did you know the day before Monday? Sunday. We can paint your face. Come and meet Ace and run base to base. Sunday. So many things to do. You could bring your crew and even mom and dad too. Sunday. Sundays are for Junior Jays. And with all kinds of cool new games and activities in the exciting outfield district areas, there's no end to the family fun you'll have. If you're feeling the song, grab your dad or mom, visit BlueJays.com. Sunday. We're two men and a truck, and we've got lots of men and lots of trucks. Whether you're planning a move to a new home or to a new office down the hall, big or small, we move them all. We even sell packing and moving supplies. But no matter what you need, we'll do it with a smile. With a 96% referral rating and the professionalism you can trust, the choice is simple. So when you're planning your next move, call two men and a truck. Two men and a truck, the movers who care. Everyone dreams of owning their own personal slice of heaven. Now you can, thanks to Fixed Rate Pizza by Pizza Pizza. Until the end of 2024, lock into an extra-large four-topping pizza at a fixed price of $17.99. No matter how bad food prices get this year, your pizza price stays. So why not say no to surge pricing and yes to Fixed Rate Pizza? Order now from Pizza Pizza. Order Pizza Pizza. The race is on. Get ready for the rush on Sportsnet. It's getting close to playoff time. And here we go. This is the stretch drive. You cannot let down your guard. The time when every game and every point can make all the difference. If you get in, you can win. The rush to the playoffs is on. Don't miss all the NHL action on Sportsnet. Here for hockey. Are you watching this? Watch on Sportsnet or stream on Sportsnet+. Plus. Timber Mart always has plans to help you with your plans. Your home, your cottage, your garage, whatever needs your attention first, check the most visited spot on our website for ready-to-order plans to get the job done with Canada's Building Centre. Visit TimberMart.ca. This is Toronto Blue Jays baseball. Hurt smacks it down the left field line. This one's got a chance. It's gone. Go- on Sportsnet 590 The Fan and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Welcome back to Jay's Talk. Joe Adley, Nick Ashbourne here with you across the Sportsnet Radio Network. We're on Sportsnet.ca and on the Sportsnet app as the Blue Jays 
win 5-3 over the Rockies to set up the rubber match tomorrow. I haven't said that too many times this year, Nick. So the rubber match will go tomorrow, 1.37 p.m. Eastern, 10.37 a.m. Pacific across the vast Sportsnet radio network. Let's chat some offense before we get back to the text line, 590-590, name and location. Still, if you want to give us a call, we got about 10 minutes left here, 416-870-590, one 590 star 590 on your cellular device. Uh, you might ima- As you might imagine, Nick, uh, still – not a lot of people super impressed with Vladimir Guerrero Jr. after another a somewhat challenging day from him offensively. Allen on the up, the up express, as I imagine what Allen means. It's a good train. I gotta say, I do quite enjoy taking that train to the airport sometimes. Uh, Allen says Vladdy needs to be benched for another base running blunder. Okay, so let's talk about the base running, and then we can certainly talk about Vladdy's bat as well. Um, and I think he does deserve some criticism for the hitting. Uh, for example. Bottom of the fourth inning, Vladdy comes up against Dakota Hudson, and Hudson throws him a sinker, middle, middle. If you look at the picture of the strike box, like the strike zone, it was at, it, you couldn't place that ball in the middle unless you had taken it and put it there, essentially, right on the box. A 91.6 mile an hour sinker, and Vladdy has to punish those balls. Like he just, he has to. That's a ball that should have been blasted through the roof of the Rogers Center, and instead it was a chopper to end the inning. But uh, I actually don't have an issue. I don't know where you fall on this with the base running today from Vladdy because he's trying to make something happen. It was a, it was a tight margin after that. Still five three at that point. He gets thrown in at third. Yes, but. I tend to lean if it takes essentially a perfect throw for that to be an out, then I tend to lean it's not the worst decision. Like that, like could he have stopped at second? Sure, I guess. But I think I, I tend to put that more on the right fielder who delivered an absolute bullet to third base, like right on the money on a moving target. And he was moving as well. I kind of tip your cap to the guy in right rather than crush Vladdy for it. Yeah, I would agree with that. I know that the general premise is you do not want to make that last out at third base. Right. When you're up in the game, you could make a case for let's be more conservative here. But it took such a good play to get him. They did not get him by a massive margin at all. And also, I know that Vladdy can be aggressive on the bases, and sometimes his reach does exceed his grasp. We'll put it that way. But this year, he's actually he, he is in pretty good shape to start this year, and he's running quite well. If you look at his stack cast sprint speed, he's actually an above average runner by top speed this season, which is not something we associate with a guy that's his size, sure. to be honest. Yep. And so, when you are running well, and as you said, it's going to require an incredible play to get you out. You could call this a blunder, but if it's a blunder, to me, it's a minor one. 416-870-0590, triple eight triple six zero five ninety star 590 on your cell. Let's go to the phones. Jonathan in Toronto joining us here on Jay's Talk. Jonathan, what's on your mind? I, I just have a question. I don't know why everybody keeps stumping on Vladdy. He's a young, good player. I mean, he'll achieve greatness in due time, hopefully. But, you know, it's, it's give the guy a break. I mean, there's... Eight other players on the field, eight other players that have to hit the ball. And and you know what? It, it's a team sport. Like, give the guy a break. So, Jonathan, where where do you fall on the base running thing today? It's baseball. It's baseball. Kudos for him running. You know, you know, it, it's so funny. You know, years ago, the Jays never ran enough. Years ago, the Jays never, you know, rolled the dice and, and played the hit and run game or, or whatever and ran for extra bases. Right. You know, you're damned if you do and damned if you don't. I mean, they are they are a, a, a an average good team, you know, who hopefully will be great one day, you know. So, I mean, I just everybody just dumps on Vladdy for no reason. The guy's how old is he, 22, 23? I'd like to see what those people did at their age of 23. Hey, you know, Jonathan, appreciate the call, man. Thanks for joining us here on j I think he's, what, 25? I yeah, want to turn 25 this year. I Honestly, I don't have much to argue with on that call. I do think that the expectations for him are so high that he probably does receive a disproportionate amount of criticism. Now, I even go back to before this out at third base. You know how he got in that situation? By hitting an 0 to 100 mile an hour fastball the other way. Like, that was a very good at bat that not a lot of, other, not a lot of people can pull off you know, surviving in that type of situation. But no one is going to remember that because we have this gaffe on the end here. And 
Yeah, Vladdy's not off to an incredible start. There's plenty of things you can look at where he's not reaching the standards you expect for him. It is very early in the season. There's plenty of time for him to have a good year, and he has become a lightning rod in a way that's not always entirely fair in my view. 416-870-0590, one triple eight triple six zero five ninety star 590 Joe joining us on the phones from Mississauga. Joe, what's on your mind? Welcome to j hey. hey, good afternoon, guys. Just saw, saw the game today. I just liking what I'm seeing from Garcia, obviously. Yeah, I wonder if Romano automatically gets that closer role because Garcia has been unhittable through spring training and now through the start of the season. So that's an interesting dilemma, a good one to have, but uh, he looks awesome. And and the other, just on uh, Edwin in the dugout, is this a permanent thing? It looks like he's meant, trying to mentor uh, Vladdy and uh I find that interesting, too. You guys got a scoop on that? You know, thanks for the call, Joe. I appreciate the call. Joining us from Mississauga. I, last I checked, and this was from the spring, I remember reading that uh, Edwin is a quote-unquote special assistant, I believe is what. I mean, he's assistant coach, but special assistant. He's not around the ball club every single game, which leads me to believe that, which is funny because I think special assistant is like a title that's intentionally uh, a little vague, a little nebulous, um, and kind of along the same lines as what what Victor Martinez does to the club as well. Like neither of these guys are around the team full-time, but I mean, I, I, I will never argue with having, in my opinion, Maybe one of the greatest Blue Jays ever. Like, maybe he's not right in the top five, but I mean, he's he's one of the more prolific Blue Jays certainly in the last like twenty years. So I'll never uh, scoff at having him help the guys out, especially if he's in the dugout offering some wisdom to some of these guys. Nick. Yeah, I mean, he was an unbelievable hitter. Most of the people listening to this, I'm sure, have fond memories of Edwin Encarnacion, and also a very intelligent hitter, like someone who was good at drawing his walks, good at avoiding strikeouts. Like he wasn't just someone who had some incredible talent other people couldn't match. He was a late bloomer in his career. He had a winding path to get to where he got to, and then he was one of the best home run hitters of his generation there. So in terms of the wisdom he brings, it's unimpeachable. I think the Victor Martinez comparison is a good comparison. We saw in the past to Dante Bichette being around the team for a time and then not. Like, I do think they bring some of these people in and out other than people who have the sort of firm jobs of you know, hitting coach, offensive coordinator, manager. There's a lot of these other people who are in that special assistance nebulous yeah. world, as you say, show. And I think the amount that he's around the team might depend on what degree they think he's effective in making a difference. I will, Joe, you know what, just for you, I will ask around, and we'll find out. We'll find out what Eddie's role is with this team. I'll go ask the my Sportsnet colleagues and some of the players when I'm down here. So we will find out. I promise we will. Uh, let's go to our, la- our last caller, Rich from Fort Erie. Rich, take us home. What's on your mind today? Yeah, I was just calling out to uh, say I'm a big fan of Laddie's, but, you know, I think he, they got to get rid of him. He's just a rally killer and uh... – I don't know. I know. I hate to say it because I know when he goes somewhere else, he's going to be awesome. But I don't know how long they can wait for him. Well, let me ask you this, Rich. What do you think? Like, if 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 everyone thinks he's not so great, which I suppose is possible, but if everyone thinks that, like, what do you think you could even get for Vladdy if you were to trade him at this point? Uh, I think they get probably a lot for him right now, but I wouldn't want to wait too long because he's just. I think he's going backwards. Hey, Rich, appreciate the call, man. Thanks for joining us here on, on Jay's Talk. I, you know, it's it's tough to gauge what Vladdy's value is. I don't think they're going to trade him, just on the, on that sense. They're not going to trade him. Like they're, if, if Vladdy is not a Blue Jay in his future, it won't be because he gets traded. It'll be because he just walked to free agency and he left, probably. Or if he gets traded, it won't be until next year. But... I don't know. It just he doesn't sound like a guy who really wants to leave. And again, yeah, does he need to show a little bit more offensively? Yes, but he's still so young to who was it? Uh, Jonathan's point that I think there's still so much runway for Vladdy, which is why it's so confounding, right, Nick? Because you feel like he should have figured it out by now because he's been in the majors for so long. But then again, he's still so young, so there's still so much left, still mu- so much more meat on the bone left. At least for me, I don't know how you feel about that. How about I paint you a nightmare scenario oh, here? God, okay. <laughs> um, I do think that there'd be a chance of Vladdy not being on this team at some point in 2024. I think the way that would happen would be this season goes down the drain and they get to the trade deadline and they come to the conclusion that this era is maybe over and it's better to trade guys with a year and a half of control left and get a big return as opposed to trying to trade rentals the next season. I don't think that's going to happen. I think that the Blue Jays are going to be at 
least humming all, along close enough to contention that they won't do a sell-off. And if they're even close, they're going to keep players who are good like Vladdy. He's a, he's a tough, frustrating player a lot of the time. I understand he hits into double plays and he can kill rallies. He can also hit massive home runs that turn rallies into crooked innings. There's a lot of everything with him, but he's someone whose talent is truly rare. And even at his worst, last year he was at his worst, he was still a notably above average MLB hitter. It wasn't like he became an unplayable bum. He just wasn't what you were hoping he would be. But even the worst version of Vladdy, him quote-unquote not figuring things out, is still not someone who is hurting your team. I say this about a lot of people, and it's it's not even... It's not even limited to sports even, Nick, but expectations for anything always kind of... It's not damages your perception, but it does change your perception of what happens when you when you get what happens in reality, right? Like for Vladdy, you know, you kind of expect him to be the Fernando Tatis Jr., Ronald Acuna Jr. of this team. And when he's not, you kind of, oh, he's a rally killer. He needs to be traded and all these different things. But I think in the rea- in reality, even if he's not quote-unquote elite, he still is probably at worst a very good above average player even if he does showboat a little which i know not everyone loves yeah happiness is expectations minus reality is that the i i think I, that's, I I think that's the, the right equation <laughs> yeah you know like if someone like let's say david schneider went off and had a huge year people would be over the moon and he would be a massive folk hero in toronto whereas if laddie did it people would be like thank goodness it's happened you know what i mean like it he does suffer from this because we've been talking about his talent since he was 16 years old and to some degree that's unfair to him because he is who he is and that's that's not part of it anymore the the prospect journey and him being the top prospect and all that stuff and to some degree we have to kind of let go of that yeah i think i i don't know i'm not here to crush Vladdy too too much like again like there were some moments today where I expected more of him but it's n- it's not enough for me to say oh he should be batting like seventh or he should be off the team mainly because I don't know if you were to like quote unquote teach him a lesson or something and bat him seventh I don't know you know you'd like the alternative options all that much I don't either. think you would no, no. All right, well, that does it for us here on Blue Jays Talk. Appreciate you guys being with us today. Brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Centers in Kitchener and Waterloo. Protect your vehicle from rust today. Your local family-owned Crown at crown.com, Canada's number one rust protection. You ready to do this all over again tomorrow, Nick? Absolutely. That is Nick Ashbourne. I'm Show Ali for Nick, for Ben Shulman, Chris LaRue, Tom Young, Nick Blackmore, Andrew Adams. I'm Show. That does it for us. Like I said, Jays Talk returns tomorrow. We'll be back at the Rock. Rogers Center to put a bow on the rubber match of Jays Rockies. We'll talk to you later. Major League Baseball play-by-play on Sirius XM and the Sirius XM app. Why do I love calling this game? Calling this game? Calling this game? Calling this game? Why do I love calling this game? It's because I get a chance to bring some joy into people's lives. Anything can happen on a baseball field. We've got a new game. It's perfectly unscripted theater. Everybody on their feet. Because you never know what you're going to see on a given day. It is Bedlam at the bank as Bryce Harper has put the Phillies on top. There's just something about baseball on the radio. Something about the way wood hits leather. A swing and a drive to deep left center. The way leather hits dirt. And he make a play. Oh, my. The way a deep fly ball sounds like it's about to change history. High fly ball to center field. It's hit pretty well toward the wall. Until the cleats hit the grass, hit the crushed brick, and then nothing but sky in a silent crowd. Until leather hits leather and 40,000 fans lose their collective minds in a perfect symphony of chaos. He jumped up on top of the wall, balanced himself, and caught it! The way nothing triumphs a perfectly honest call. I don't believe what I just saw. And the way the right voice can make a moment live forever. Touch them all, Joe! You'll never hit a bigger home run in your life! Outsiders may think this is just two teams. The ball, a bat, and a microphone, but no. For over a hundred years, this has been the soundtrack of the American pastime. He struck it out looking. It's over. It's over. The Rangers have won the World Series. The soundtrack of summer. 
This is Major League Baseball on the radio right now on Sirius XM. All rise. Coming in five. Get ready to play. Four. Get up. Get up. Three. Can you believe it? Put your seatbelt on. Wow. Talk about the game and all the stories on MLB Network Radio. Sirius XM 89 and the Sirius XM app. The Diamondbacks take on the San Luis Cardinals. Diamondbacks on Sirius 211 XM 186 and Internet 840. Cardinals on Internet 865. 9 10 p.m. LA Dodgers taking the San Diego Padres. Dodgers on Sirius 208 XM 175 and Internet 853. Padres on Internet 862. National feed on Sirius XM and Internet channels 89. Spanish feed on Sirius 209 XM 176 and Internet 871. 9 40 p.m. Seattle Mariners taking the Chicago Cubs. Mariners on Sirius 210 XM 177 and Internet 864. Cubs on Internet 844. I am Frank Trachtenberg with your Sirius XM MLB schedule for Saturday, April the 13th. All times are Eastern, and please remember, all games, times, and channels are subject to change. Check SiriusXM.com for the latest updates. In Major League Baseball, 1.10 p.m. Detroit Tigers take on the Minnesota Twins. Tigers on Sirius Nick some channels 89, Internet 849, Twins on Internet 856. 1.40 p.m. New York Mets take on the Kansas City Royals. Mets on Sirius 208, XM 175, and Internet 857. Royals on Internet 851. 2.10 p.m. Chicago White Sox take on the Cincinnati Reds. White Sox on Sirius 209, XM 176, and Internet 845. Reds on Internet 846. 3.07 p.m. Toronto Blue Jays take on the Colorado Rockies. Blue Jays on Sirius 210, XM 177, and Internet 868. Rockies on Internet 848. 4.05 p.m. Baltimore Orioles take on the Milwaukee Brewers. Orioles on Sirius 106, XM 179, and Internet 842. Brewers on Internet 855. 4.05 p.m. Philadelphia Phillies take on the Pittsburgh Pirates. Phillies on Sirius 137, XM 181, and Internet 860. Pirates on Internet 861. 4.05 p.m. Houston Astros take on the Texas Rangers. Astros on Sirius 119, XM 180, and Internet 850. Rangers on Internet 867. Spanish feed on Internet 870. 4.07 p.m. Oakland A's take on the Washington Nationals. A's on Sirius 138, XM 182, and Internet 859. Nationals on Internet 869. Sirius XM has soccer covered end to end. Sirius XM FC. Hear live play-by-play and talk shows hosted by legends of the game. It's Sirius XM FC on Channel 157. Host on MLB Network Radio, Xavier Scruggs, talks about... The young phenom Jackson Holiday of the Baltimore Orioles. Jackson Holiday is an example of a, a meteoric rise to get to the big league level um, with such a great head on his shoulders. We've had the opportunity to talk to him during spring training, and we, we, you just get a sense of the maturity, right? It, everything, the tools, the ability, the uh, excitement he brings to the field, the athleticism, all that stuff you can immediately see when he plays. But it's the maturity to me that really stands out in his ability to understand the game. When when you look at a guy's plate discipline, when you look at a guy's pitch recognition, his ability to be patient at the plate and wait for his right pitch and the right approach, that stands out to me in a, in a major way. And it shows me that he's major league ready, right? You think about Baltimore and their ability to rely on Jordan Westberg hasn't really worked out the way this early, right? Still early at second base, but you're easily able to slot him in Jackson Holiday in the second base. Westberg can do some things by moving over to third as well. You have so many options because of the depth of this team. And now you bring a, 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 future superstar into the mix into a team that won 101 games last year the the sky is the limit for the Orioles at this point I'm excited for the things that Jackson Holiday is going to do while competing at the big league level because he's already shown us how he can dominate the minor league level follow every second of the action on NHL Network Radio from behind the bench to every play on the ice if it's hockey it's on Sirius XM NHL Network Radio Sirius XM 91 I am Frank Trachtenberg with your Sirius XM MLB schedule for Saturday April the 13th all times are Eastern and please remember all games times and channels are subject to change check SiriusXM.com for the latest updates in Major League Baseball 1.10 p.m. Detroit Tigers take on the Minnesota Twins. Tigers on Sirius Nick some channels 89 Internet 849. Twins on Internet 856. 1.40 p.m. New York Mets take on the Kansas City Royals. 
Mets on Sirius 208, XM 175, and Internet 857. Royals on Internet 851. 2 10 p.m. Chicago White Sox taking the Cincinnati Reds. White Sox on Sirius 209, XM 176, and Internet 845. Reds on Internet 846. 3.07 p.m. Toronto Blue Jays take on the Colorado Rockies. Blue Jays on Sirius 210, XM 177, and Internet 868. Rockies on Internet 848. 4.05 p.m. Baltimore Orioles take on the Milwaukee Brewers. Orioles on Sirius 106, XM 179, and Internet 842. Brewers on Internet 855. 4.05 p.m. Philadelphia Phillies take on the Pittsburgh Pirates. Phillies on Sirius 137, XM 181, and Internet 860. Pirates on Internet 861. 4.05 p.m. Houston Astros take on the Texas Rangers. Astros on Sirius 119, XM 180, and Internet 850. Rangers on Internet 867. Spanish feed on Internet 870. 4.07 p.m. Oakland Days take on the Washington Nationals. A's on Sirius 138, XM 182, and Internet 859. Nationals on Internet 869. 4.10 p.m. Boston Red Sox take on the LA Angels. Red Sox on Sirius 139, XM 183, and Internet 843. Angels on Internet 852. 4.10 p.m. Miami Marlins take on the Atlanta Braves. Marlins on Sirius 160, XM 184, and Internet 854. Braves on Internet 841. 4.10 p.m. Tampa Bay Rays take on the San Francisco Giants. Rays on Sirius 161, XM 178, and Internet 866. Giants on Internet 863. 6.10 p.m. Cleveland Guardians take on the New York Yankees. Guardians on Sirius 162, XM 185, and Internet 847. Yankees on Internet 858. 8.10 p.m. Arizona Diamondbacks take on the St. Louis Cardinals. Diamondbacks on Sirius 211, XM 186, and Internet 840. Cardinals on Internet 865. 9.10 p.m. LA Dodgers take on the San Diego Padres. Dodgers on Sirius 208, XM 175, and Internet 853. Padres on Internet 862. National feed on Sirius XM and Internet channels 89. Spanish feed on Sirius 209, XM 176, and Internet 871. 9.40 p.m. Seattle Mariners take on the Chicago Cubs. Mariners on Sirius 210, XM 177, and Internet 864. Cubs on Internet 844. I am Frank Trachtenberg with your Sirius XM MLB schedule for Saturday, April the 13th. All times are Eastern, and please remember, all games, times, and channels are subject to change. Check SiriusXM.com for the latest updates. In Major League Baseball, 1.10 p.m. Detroit Tigers take on the Minnesota Twins. Tigers on Sirius Nick some channels 89, Internet 849. Twins on Internet 856. 1.40 p.m. New York Mets take on the Kansas City Royals. Mets on Sirius 208, XM 175, and Internet 857. Royals on Internet 851. 2.10 p.m. Chicago White Sox take on the Cincinnati Reds. White Sox on Sirius 209, XM 176, and Internet 845. Reds on Internet 846. 3.07 p.m. Toronto Blue Jays take on the Colorado Rockies. Blue Jays on Sirius 210, XM 177, and Internet 868. Rockies on Internet 848. 4.05 p.m. Baltimore Orioles take on the Milwaukee Brewers. Orioles on Sirius 106, XM 179, and Internet 842. Brewers on Internet 855. 4.05 p.m. Philadelphia Phillies take on the Pittsburgh Pirates. Phillies on Sirius 137, XM 181, and Internet 860. Pirates on Internet 861. 4.05 p.m. Houston Astros take on the Texas Rangers. Astros on Sirius 119, XM 180, and Internet 850. Rangers on Internet 867. Spanish feed on Internet 870. 4.07 p.m. Oakland A's take on the Washington Nationals. A's on Sirius 138, XM 182, and Internet 859. Nationals on Internet 869. Sirius XM Fantasy Sports Radio is the place for expert advice, strategy, and information from the best fantasy sports analysis to win your league. Plus, hear pick-by-pick coverage of live drafts and interviews with top players, coaches, and team executives on Sirius XM 87. Milwaukee Brewers manager Pat Murphy was on MLB Network Radio and talked about his rookie phenom, Jackson Churio. I'm floored of how good he's played right off the shoot. You know what I mean? He hasn't been a great starter in his career, meaning first month of the season, even in his A ball and in double A. But, and he didn't look in spring. I was a little bit worried, to be honest with you. Tried not to let him know, but maybe he did figure it out. Like, I was like, whoa, he don't look ready. But he's proven me 100% wrong. Um, okay. You know, from day one, we let him off the first game. And, you know, it's like he felt like I can do this. I mean, he he looked like he was feeling that way. And he hasn't disappointed us. He's been very, very good. Now, he's still 20, and he's still going to do some things. Last night, he had an AB, took a fastball for strike three, which he normally wouldn't do, but got himself set up and looking for something else. But that happens, right? We've all done that. And he's... um, yeah, he's, he's, he's fun to watch. He's got a day off today. He's probably wondering. He probably thinks he's getting benched. But, um, 
you know, it's been, it, it, it couldn't have been, it, it, it couldn't have been easy, but he is, he's done it really, really elegantly in my opinion. That was Milwaukee Brewers manager and bench boss, Pat Murphy on MLB Network Radio Channel 89, talking about his rookie standout, Jackson Churio. Get the latest news, opinion, and analysis from MMA to boxing and the professional wrestling world 24-7. Sirius XM Fight Nation, Sirius XM 156, and the SXM app. I am Frank Trachtenberg with your Sirius XM MLB schedule for Saturday, April the 13th. All times are Eastern and please remember, all games, times, and channels are subject to change. Check SiriusXM.com for the latest updates. In Major League Baseball... 1 10 p.m. Detroit Tigers take on the Minnesota Twins. Tigers on Sirius Nick some channels 89 Internet 849. Twins on Internet 856. 1 40 p.m. New York Mets take on the Kansas City Royals. Mets on Sirius 208 XM 175 and Internet 857. Royals on Internet 851. 2 10 p.m. Chicago White Sox take on the Cincinnati Reds. White Sox on Sirius 209 XM 176 and Internet 845. Reds on Internet 846. 3.07 p.m. Toronto Blue Jays take on the Colorado Rockies. Blue Jays on Sirius 210, XM 177, and Internet 868. Rockies on Internet 848. 4.05 p.m. Baltimore Orioles take on the Milwaukee Brewers. Orioles on Sirius 106, XM 179, and Internet 842. Brewers on Internet 855. 4.05 p.m. Philadelphia Phillies take on the Pittsburgh Pirates. Phillies on Sirius 137, XM 181, and Internet 860. Pirates on Internet 861. 4.05 p.m. Houston Astros take on the Texas Rangers. Astros on Sirius 119, XM 180, and Internet 850. Rangers on Internet 867. Spanish Feed on Internet 870. 4.07 p.m. Oakland A's take on the Washington Nationals. A's on Sirius 138, XM 182, and Internet 859. Nationals on Internet 869. 4.10 p.m. Boston Red Sox take on the LA Angels. Red Sox on Sirius 139, XM 183, and Internet 843. Angels on Internet 852. 4.10 p.m. Miami Marlins take on the Atlanta Braves. Marlins on Sirius 160, XM 184, and Internet 854. Braves on Internet 841. 4.10 p.m. Tampa Bay Rays take on the San Francisco Giants. Rays on Sirius 161, XM 178, and Internet 866. Giants on Internet 863. 6.10 p.m. Cleveland Gardens take on the New York Yankees. Guardians on Sirius 162, XM 185, and Internet 847. Yankees on Internet 858. 8.10 p.m. Arizona Diamondbacks take on the St. Louis Cardinals. Diamondbacks on Sirius 211 XM 186 and Internet 840. Cardinals on Internet 865. 9.10 p.m. LA Dodgers take on the San Diego Padres. Dodgers on Sirius 208 XM 175 and Internet 853. Padres on Internet 862. National feed on Sirius XM and Internet channels 89. Spanish feed on Sirius 209 XM 176 and Internet 871. 9.40 p.m. Seattle Mariners take on the Chicago Cubs. Mariners on Sirius 210, XM 177, and Internet 864. Cubs on Internet 844. I am Frank Trachtenberg with your Sirius XM MLB schedule for Saturday, April the 13th. All times are Eastern, and please remember, all games, times, and channels are subject to change. Check SiriusXM.com for the latest updates. In Major League Baseball, 1.10 p.m. Detroit Tigers take on the Minnesota Twins. Tigers on Sirius Nick some channels 89, Internet 849. Twins on Internet 856. 1.40 p.m. New York Mets take on the Kansas City Royals. Mets on Sirius 208, XM 175, and Internet 857. Royals on Internet 851. 2 10 p.m. Chicago White Sox take on the Cincinnati Reds. White Sox on Sirius 209, XM 176, and Internet 845. Reds on Internet 846. 3 7 p.m. Toronto Blue Jays take on the Colorado Rockies. Blue Jays on Sirius 210, XM 177, and Internet 868. Rockies on Internet 848. 4 5 p.m. Baltimore Orioles take on the Milwaukee Brewers. Orioles on Sirius 106, XM 179, and Internet 842. Brewers on Internet 855. 4.05 p.m. Philadelphia Phillies take on the Pittsburgh Pirates. Phillies on Sirius 137, XM 181, and Internet 860. Pirates on Internet 861. 4.05 p.m. Houston Astros take on the Texas Rangers. Astros on Sirius 119, XM 180, and Internet 850. Rangers on Internet 867. Spanish feed on Internet 870. 4.07 p.m. Oakland A's take on the Washington Nationals. A's on Sirius 138, XM 182, and Internet 859. Nationals on Internet 869. Mad Dog Sports Radio has the best sports talk in the business. Covering sports with a passion and knowledge you need. Mad Dog Sports Radio. Sirius XM 86. And the SXM app. LA Dodgers manager Dave Roberts was on MLB Network Radio and talked about Shohei Otani. As everyone else knows how... Uh, uber talented he is 
And the thing about the superstars or and even athletes in general is we just have a way, whether it's good or bad, uh, to compartmentalize life from sports. Um, and you sort of sometimes feel, you know, when you do get to the ballpark or to the football field or the basketball arena, that that's your safe haven and you can kind of let everything outside uh, dissipate and, and quiet the noise for, you know, two hours, three hours. And uh, no one has handled it better than Shohei. And like you said, it is good to know that he's been exonerated from all these uh, charges. Yeah. Uh, do you think it's been difficult for the rest of the guys in the clubhouse having to kind of deal with this? Or is this kind of just guys understand this is just kind of what comes with the territory, but we got a job to do. Are you, are you kind of having to remind them, let's just focus on what we can control and, and, you know, hopefully all this stuff will clear up on its own. I mean, that has to be a challenge for you. I, I think for us, uh, fortunately, uh, you know, we're surrounded by a very uh, veteran, uh, you know, headstrong, focused group. And so it's a culture that we've created and the, the buy-in to focus on the day at hand and appreciating the fact that there's going to be distractions, uh, you know, all year long and, you know, on the field, off the field. MLB Network Radio is your home for 24-7 baseball talk, featuring on-site coverage of every major event from spring training through the World Series and expert analysis from former general managers and players. Sirius XM, Channel 89. I am Frank Trachtenberg with your Sirius XM MLB schedule for Saturday, April the 13th. All times are Eastern, and please remember, all games, times, and channels are subject to change. Check SiriusXM.com for the latest updates. In Major League Baseball, 1.10 p.m. Detroit Tigers take on the Minnesota Twins. Tigers on Sirius XM channels 89, Internet 849, Twins on Internet 856. 1.40 p.m. New York Mets take on the Kansas City Royals. Mets on Sirius 208, XM 175, and Internet 857. Royals on Internet 851. 2.10 p.m. Chicago White Sox take on the Cincinnati Reds. White Sox on Sirius 209, XM 176, and Internet 845. Reds on Internet 846. 3.07 p.m. Toronto Blue Jays take on the Colorado Rockies. Blue Jays on Sirius 210, XM 177, and Internet 868. Rockies on Internet 848. 4.05 p.m. Baltimore Orioles take on the Milwaukee Brewers. Orioles on Sirius 106, XM 179, and Internet 842. Brewers on Internet 855. 4.05 p.m. Philadelphia Phillies take on the Pittsburgh Pirates. Phillies on Sirius 137, XM 181, and Internet 860. Pirates on Internet 861. 4.05 p.m. Houston Astros take on the Texas Rangers. Astros on Sirius 119, XM 180, and Internet 850. Rangers on Internet 867. Spanish feed on Internet 870. 4.07 p.m. Oakland A's take on the Washington Nationals. A's on Sirius 138, XM 182, and Internet 859. Nationals on Internet 869. 4.10 p.m., Boston Red Sox take on the LA Angels. Red Sox on Sirius 139, XM 183, and Internet 843. Angels on Internet 852. 4.10 p.m., Miami Marlins take on the Atlanta Braves. Marlins on Sirius 160, XM 184, and Internet 854. Braves on Internet 841. 4.10 p.m., Tampa Bay Rays take on the San Francisco Giants. Rays on Sirius 161, XM 178, and Internet 866. Giants on Internet 863. 6.10 p.m. Cleveland Guardians stick on the New York Yankees. Guardians on Sirius 162, XM 185, and Internet 847. Yankees on Internet 858. 8.10 p.m. Arizona Diamondbacks stick on the St. Louis Cardinals. Diamondbacks on Sirius 211, XM 186, and Internet 840. Cardinals on Internet 865. 9.10 p.m. LA Dodgers stick on the San Diego Padres. Dodgers on Sirius 208, XM 175, and Internet 853. Padres on Internet 862. National feed on Sirius XM and Internet channels 89. Spanish feed on Sirius 209, XM 176, and Internet 871. 9.40 p.m. Seattle Mariners take on the Chicago Cubs. Mariners on Sirius 210, XM 177, and Internet 864. Cubs on Internet 844. I am Frank Trachtenberg with your Sirius XM MLB schedule for Saturday, April the 13th. All times are Eastern, and please remember, all games, times, and channels are subject to change. Check SiriusXM.com for the latest updates. In Major League Baseball, 1.10 p.m. Detroit Tigers take on the Minnesota Twins. Tigers on Sirius XM channels 89, Internet 849. Twins on Internet 856. 1.40 p.m. New York Mets take on the Kansas City Royals. Mets on Sirius 208, XM 175, and Internet 857. Royals on Internet 851. 2.10 p.m. Chicago White Sox take on the Cincinnati Reds. White Sox on Sirius 209, XM 176, and Internet 845. Reds on Internet 846. 3.07 p.m. Toronto Blue Jays take on the Colorado Rockies. Blue Jays on Sirius 210, XM 177, and Internet 868. Rockies on Internet 848. 4.05 p.m. Baltimore Orioles take on the Milwaukee Brewers. 
Orioles on Sirius 106, XM 179, and Internet 842. Brewers on Internet 855. 4.05 p.m. Philadelphia Phillies take on